going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Ask Nick edition. I am your host, Nick, joined by part of the household. We got Leia, Allie, and sweet, sweet, sweet boy Justin. Excuse me, Scooter. Scoots Magoots. Scoots Magoots. Scoots Magoots. Uh, what's up, everybody? What's going on? You know what? I actually you know what. Forget it. Fuck you guys. I don't really care. <laughs> I I thought about something last night. What? I thought like you know this ass Nick show that you know I famously give advice that most people seem to enjoy and like and all that fun stuff. It's like a lot of the advice I I you know I always say like I'm not a therapist. I'm not an expert. And the overwhelming majority of my advice I I give through the lens of mistakes I've made in the past. A lot of the advice I often give is around like situationships or not being taken for granted, setting boundaries, you know, like uh, accepting rejection, you know, things like that. You know, all these things I struggle with and got wrong, you know, in and out of relationships and, and things like that. I feel like this show should have some kind of um, mission statement almost in a way. We, the Vile Files, promise to ban fuckboys. What is the overwhelming theme of the advice that I give on the show? Pursuit of happiness. Sure. Accountability. More on accountability. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. I'm a big believer that our choices matter. You've probably heard me say in this show. Like, I, I personally don't believe that everything happens for a reason. I believe things will work out if you're willing to learn. I think our choices matter. I think you can make bad choices. I think you can make choices that fuck up your life. People do it every day and they pretend like everything happens for a reason. No, maybe you just made a bad fucking choice and your life got worse, not better as a result of it. And most of us make these bad choices with time to adapt and learn and recover from. Thankfully, most of our bad choices aren't life ending, uh, both literally and figuratively, but they can damage things. And if we keep making bad choices, our, you know, we are not entitled to a good life. I'm a big believer in that. And Ultimately, when people call in, I'm just offering an unbiased opinion and I'm offering them an opportunity to look at their situation through a different lens. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, every situation we are affected by our feelings, how much we've invested in that situation, our ego and things like that. And I am just ultimately, I'm not telling our callers what to do or how to think about it. I'm just offering them a different perspective so they can hopefully make important choices throughout an unbiased lens because our choices do matter. It can affect our relationships. It can affect, you know, our finances and, and things. I'm just a big believer in that. I think that would be good for merch. Yeah, Choices sure. matter. That wasn't even the point of why I brought all this up because what I'm about to say, it's just like all the advice I've given up into this point really is like, again, through the lens of like, I might not be an expert, but I've done a lot of shit. I've gotten a lot of shit wrong. I've learned from it. Ultimately, I do give a lot of advice on things that like I don't haven't necessarily been involved in, but like I'm just applying my decision making skills, my ability to have overcome like adversity and disappointment and rejection and loss and like whatever. But now I am entering my, me, Nick, in my life. I went grocery shopping. I came back home. I'm like, I, I've never done this before. I've never gotten married. I've never had a kid before. All the things that Natalie and I are doing every day, it, it's the first time for me. It was kind of funny and kind of crazy. Well, it's kind of like, have you heard that thing where they say, sometimes people that aren't actively in a relationship will give you better advice about your relationship? Sure. I mean, like ultimately so like, the reason why people always are giving better advice to other people and not themselves is because they're not personally invested. They're exactly, not emotionally yeah. connected. They're detached. You know, it's not like only people in relationship get advice to people in relationships. It's not really about that. Yeah. You know, it, it's about one's ability to like actively listen and, you know, apply what they've learned to different situations and give like an unbiased opinion. But I just think it's kind of funny that I am now entering a season of my life that I have no experience. Uncharted territory. I'm on, and I'm entering uncharted mm -hmm. territory for the first time in a long time. It makes your perspective valuable because you're actively experiencing it. So you yeah. can mm -hmm. verb, like say things in a way that people who are also actively experiencing it understand it. Versus sure. a retrospective sometimes is like dulled down, you know? Yeah. I mean, like I've never really given advice on the show who lens of like, I do everything right. I don't make mistakes. So do what I do. It's often like, don't do what I did. Learn from my mistakes. Do what I would have done differently. I think it's just kind of a fascinating thought to realize every day for me is just more like, oh, fuck. I don't know. I've never done this before. I mean, I'm, I'm being a little like, but over nobody, dramatic. Nobody has. Like everybody who's a first time parent or, sure. you know, entering a marriage for the first time like it's a learning experience and every day is different totally. every day is a learning yeah, opportunity. I'm, I'm being a little dramatic but it's just kind of fascinating because i've never really done that before anyways it's just a random thought i had decisions matter don't fuck up your life yeah i think it's just crazy that we have a society that walks around we love 
convincing ourselves that everything happens for a reason and that like we are entitled to like a happy life, that everything will work out, that everything's going to be fine. And like, maybe, do you ever walk out in the street and see people who every day you're just like, it all went wrong for them. Like every day, walk outside. You'll see people every day that prove that you are not entitled to like a a good life. I think I prescribe to the like everything happens for a reason. Because sometimes there's no other way to think about life. Like you have to just life keep, happens. Man. Yeah. Life happens, but like sometimes you end up in positions where it's like, how how did I get here? Nobody knows. You, you made but a, it happened. Because you ba- you made a bunch of like little choices that added to this moment. And then other people made choices that affected you unbeknownst to you. Some yeah. of those choices, I mean I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect. You know, it's crazy. How did we all get to be in the same room? Think of all the little things that happened. There are so many people that I had to meet randomly for me to be The Bachelor. After I was on The Bachelorette, like I got a text from a friend, I guess a friend, a girl who I hadn't talked to in years. And she texted, she was like catching up and saw something. I did something and sent a complimentary text. And I was like, who's this? You know, I'm like, well, you know who it is? If it, if it weren't for this girl, we wouldn't be together today. She doesn't even know who this girl is. She's never met her. She probably will never meet her, you know? But this girl randomly saw me at Lollapalooza who gave me a free pass to a stage that she was working and me going to that stage allowed me to meet my friend Kyle, who also introduced to some other people. And Kyle was the person I eventually moved in with. And if Kyle wasn't there, who convinced me to move to LA for a period of time, I would have just gone back to work and never been The Bachelor. If I was never The Bachelor, I would never have met Natalie. And that was just one little moment. It was one choice I made. Was it a choice or did it happen though? Because like she happened to be there at the time that you met her or that whatever it is again if you want to believe that it's all fucking like some pre or i always find it fascinating too like when it comes to religion a lot of religious people it's like oh everything happens for a reason i grew up very religious same i always find what's fascinating for all the religious folk out there specifically the christians because i'm familiar with christianity and catholicism it's like everything happens for a reason but what about what's the greatest gift that god gave us his son (laughs) <laughs> okay, other than Jesus, of course. Free will. Free will is the ability to make choices for ourselves. It's, it, oh, it's preordained. It's fate. It was going to happen regardless. That's not free will. That's the illusion of free will. Yeah, this is something I definitely struggle with in terms of like which one I believe because I go back and forth all the time because I do believe in the butterfly effect. I think back to like choices that even my ancestors made. You know, if my great grandmother hadn't moved from Greece to Turkey, she wouldn't have met my great grandfather. I wouldn't have been born. Like having River, I've been sitting there being like, oh my God, you're literally a miracle baby. Because like, think of all the gazillion infinite things that had to happen in this universe for her to exist. A hundred percent. It's fucking crazy. But then I also think about, you know, death or people, like not to get too dark, but, and I'm like, why did that? person who you know never smoked a cigarette in their life or you know was super healthy and super young sure. like, prematurely pass away or something and then i'm like life's not fair everything must happen for a reason because why then you th- i don't know because i don't know if it's I think safer about, it makes you feel safe and warm and secure i don't know i think about it all the time i'm just like why did that happen that must have happened for a reason well, I mean, it, it, we're getting into the weeds here, but if you do believe in an afterlife, maybe that reason is like, you know, if you grow up Catholic, right, you know, as three of us in this room have, you're, you're raised to be like, listen, we're only here to get to there, you know? So who cares the shit about what happens here, you know? And that's why as Catholics, we're like, suffer, suffer, you know, you'll earn your way, suffer, you know, like, <laughs> um, but we... That's the belief because like that, it's all about to get in the afterlife, you know? So the why, you know, it doesn't matter if the baby tragically is diagnosed with leukemia because like maybe that was a gift from God in order to suffer more to get their way to heaven. And if ultimately, you know, that's what you believe, you know, fuck, we're really getting, the weeds getting in the weeds here. But yeah. yeah, I mean, personal choice, that's just me. I just think I'd rather live in a world where our choices matter where, and we're accountable for our choices and then we have free will, whether it's because of our God gave it to us or just the, the universe that we live in. And it gives us more control and more accountability. Like we want to have our own agency and power, but also believe that everything happens for a reason. I think both can exist at the same time. I think that, that everything does happen for a reason and that we have a path that we're on and then we have choices to make along that road that could get us to different points but we're kind of destined to exist in one of those maybe so essentially nick is our god ask nick is our religion <laughs> that we was, call in to get free will that, that, was, what, that was ultimately what i was trying to <laughs> got it okay so it makes sense now uh, uh, no 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 our choices matter 
you know, you know, that's a, it's a gift. Yeah. For, not to get a religious or it, but like free will. We don't appreciate free will as much as we should. Yeah, for sure. And when we say everything happens for a reason, I think we diminish the power that is free will and the choices that come with it. Anyways, you have a game. Good transition. <laughs> On a lighter note, I was showing everybody what I got for my birthday. <laughs> that's your birthday present to yourself? No, my grandfather gave me this toy for my birthday. And it's like the stupidest thing in the world, but I love it. And I was just showing everybody what in is the it? office. <laughs> Other than like a little rubber. I have no clue. It's a stress ball. Here, it's a stress ball? I'll change I love a stress ball. Yeah, what so what you, is it? What does it do? You like push the little things in and it's like a, and then you can push them out. So basically she's an iPad kid that needs something to touch. It's a, fid it's a fidgeter. <laughs> it's like a fidget toy, but my grandfather gave it to me for my birthday. Anyway, so it, it started us talking about toys that we used to have as kids. And so we thought it would be fun to talk about the toys that we had, how crazy it was that some of them existed and that we had them, and then toys that still exist and kids are playing with today and maybe toys that River has. Let's go. Okay, so one is Barbies. Just to play with my sisters. You, you play with hers? Yeah. I wasn't allowed to. S sometimes we had G I, I had the G.I. Joes, the little G.I. Joes, and the big Barbies. That got weird. You weren't allowed to play with Barbies? No, yeah. Because guys don't play with Barbies. And if you play with Barbies, oh, you, you weren't might... allowed to play. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to. And if you play with Barbies, that might affect your sexuality. And then you ended up being gay anyways. Yeah, so it didn't work out. <laughs> so, I mean, note to parents. Oops. <laughs> Give them the Barbie anyways. Uh, oh, interesting. It yeah. was, it was, uh, okay, wow. Yeah. I thought it was more like a sacrilegious type of thing. Like, I mean, naked Barbies. Yeah. It's like you're like a little nude doll. Oh, I would make my Barbies have sex in the hotel. Yeah, we would. Oh, we would totally do that. GI Joes and Barbies Go going together. at it. Yeah. Yeah. There was a pregnant Barbie, right? That had like there a baby. Was. I had her. I literally begged my mom. My mom was going to the store, and I was like, "I really want the pregnant Barbie." And then I like kind of forgot about it, and I went up to my room like hours later, and she was sitting in the corner. <laughs> and you could remove her belly. Oh, that's good. And the baby was in the belly. Oh, yeah. Oh my God! Can I see a vit picture of this? Pregnant Barbie? Yeah, it was a magnetic belly that you uh -huh, could like magnetic. rip off her stomach and then you could put the baby in the belly and stick it back on. This is disturbing to look at. How does in the stomach would just kind of pop on? Yeah, pop on, pop off. She was discontinued, right? The pregnant Barbie? Well, that's what they said in the Barbie movie because then at the end, Will Ferrell was like, ah, Midge, I thought we discontinued you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have a problem with letting River yeah. play with a Barbie. The Barbie still exists, yeah? They're, I are think they, so. Are they, are they, sure. Did they just like, did they look like the Barbies of old? They're more inclusive now. So there's different sizes, different like skin shades. I have a fun one. Easy bake ovens. Do you know what that is? I, I do. Those things are dangerous. Like if you want a, a house fire, get an Easy Bake Oven. I don't think they get that hot. Yeah, but like they had... Like they were catching on fire. Did like they, they actually had a... cook food. Why, like a easy bake oven, and not just like let's cook with mom and dad in the real kitchen. What if your well, parents weren't home? Because the real oh oven. Oh my god! I definitely would not get an easy bake oven so that my kid can cook on her own. Yeah, but the I mean, these easy bake ovens were like in kids' bedrooms, and they could use them whenever they want. Yeah, yeah absolutely not. They also recalled them. Like that's how dangerous they became. I just think it was cool that you could actually like eat your stuff. You had all your tools. You'd like mix it up. You could put it in the thing, and you'd like have little pokers to put it in. Oh, there's something about like I don't know why personal pan Pizza Hut pizzas were such a thing oh, back in the day. Good. Those were the best, and like something about it being a personal pizza was better than like having a slice of pizza. I don't know. I'm sure it had something to do with that. As a kid, did you guys have uh, the bookets? Like you would read a certain amount, and you get, you'd earn like a personal Pizza, the pizza Hut pizza. Hut? Yeah. Wait, like yeah, through school? Or that. Or? Yeah, was like a mid yeah, I think it was a Midwest thing at least. Wait, it was, sure. it was through Pizza would, Hut? Because then if you read, then you got yeah. a coupon, and then you could bring it to Pizza Hut, and then they'd and get, give like, you a free your own personal... like, pizza for yeah. reading. And it was like the greatest thing ever. California could never. I wish. Wow. No, yeah. I did not have that. I think if you were me eating Play-Doh when I was younger, then Easy Bake Oven would have been the good alternative. Play-Doh. Yeah. So good. Homemade, homemade Play-Doh. Homemade Play-Doh. That's of salty. So... <laughs> <laughs> How do you make Play-Doh? I never made it. My daycare used to make it and pop a little snack here and there. Well, I wasn't allowed to have the Easy Bake Oven because my family was kosher, so we couldn't have oh. it. So I would do Easy Bake stuff what with was in the What was in the Easy Bake Ovens that, weren't, well, that wasn't kosher? And my house was super, co like everything had to have a symbol. And what it, other than like no ham? Oh, every, it's no, so like you strict. you have to separate meat and dairy. So if like really kosher houses you have separate like knives and tupperware and everything by the way i even still in my current kitchen have two of everything like meat and uh dairy 
Tell me more. Because I, my, so my family is still But what's the premise religious. of being kosher? So you're not allowed to mix meat and milk. It originates Why? from you don't want to have a baby in its mother's milk. And so that extends to everything that's meat. This sounds like why dairy. Catholics can't eat fish on Friday. It's like way back when. Forgot about that. It was, a, practic it was a practical decision and it had to do with like survival. Because I can understand why in like the year 20, <laughs> they weren't mixing dairy and milk for like hygienic purposes. Well, this was like, it's more of like an ethical thing where you don't want to eat a baby in its mother's milk. And well, then I get why you don't in terms eat of a baby. kosher meat, <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of kosher meat, it's that the there's a rabbi who supervises and makes sure that the animal is killed in an ethical way. Interesting. And you have two of everything because of like habit? I have two of everything because I want my mom when you to say, eat in my house. And when you say everything, every, what do I mean? Like two, I need two separate to plates. Food. I huh? even have in my sink two different sponges. sides of the sink that I'll wash my dishes on and two different sponges. Your parents are still pretty religious? My my dad's passed away, but my mom is still like observant. My brother is. And so I want them all. And Danny's are too. So I want them to be able to eat in my house. So I keep it all kosher. And they've only eaten in my house twice. We've lived there for three years. So I don't know. Kosher salt. No, that's just, that's just the, othering it being good salt. That's just a thing. <laughs> kosher is, isn't kosher like, it's just a type of salt, right? I, like, mean, I don't know. I, it's I'm not, ignorant. I, I can buy it. any salt. Okay. Yeah. All right. No on anyway. Easy Bake Ovens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not if you're Jewish. <laughs> what about playgrounds? Like playgrounds back then that were like wooden splinters, or you had mentioned like the merry-go-round? Well, when I was a kid, the merry-go-rounds, we would, it was crazy what we would do. We would, they would put a, all the kids would just, how many kids can you fit on the merry-go-round? And how fast you go, so it would whip kids off. Wait, who was who was controlling the merry-go-round? The kids. Other kids. What? Yeah, and then tube slides. We would see how many kids you could cram in the tube slide. <laughs> oh. So no. your face would be up, uh, 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 insane, unsafe. Like how someone didn't suffocate and die? Do not know. You're the reason that our playgrounds now are boring. Poles with but nothing. But I feel on like them. it was still <laughs> happening in yeah. our generation because I remember, like, I had a a friend, and we had one of those like drawbridge things. But there was no gates on either side, and it was like pretty high up. And Kelsey fully just fell off the drawbridge and broke her arm. And they were like, "We should probably put some bars up there." Yeah, I mean, there was always a broken arm or two during recess when I was growing up. What about the seesaw? <laughs> Band. The seesaw. You could was... launch people. Well, really? also, it was always like a weight thing. Like, yeah. I would never go on a seesaw if somebody was smaller than me. I would only go on the seesaw with people who I knew would be would hoist me up. And I was also a tiny kid, so it's like I sit on that and I just I'm stuck at the top. Like, See, I was the opposite. Anywhere. I it's was the like... chubby kid who was like okay. terrified to sit on a seesaw. <laughs> 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 that was my worst nightmare. <laughs> and if I, I got on with a guy and and then I would be on the bottom. <laughs> so we were sitting out. We were not on the my nightmare would have been a seesaw with you, Justin. <laughs> Literally, I'm just visualizing you guys just stuck <laughs> just forever. Be at the bottom, okay. Justin's like <laughs> flying over. Uh, <laughs> did you guys ever have like full metal slides? Because that shit got hot. It hurt. That hurt. Why well, was running yeah. up a slide as a kid so cool? Defying gravity, breaking the rules. Alphabet. Mm -hmm. uh, going to Chuck E. Cheese and playing oh. tag was the best. And they would never. We'd always. They would say, "You can't do that. No running in the in the." Plain tag at Chuck E. Cheese, greatest time of my life. I have a hot take. What's up? Chuck E. Cheese pizza is the best like pizza to exist on earth. I haven't had it in a lifetime. Guessing I don't agree. I think it's good. My whole family got food poisoning from it. We never oh. went back. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That wasn't my Chuck E. Cheese. Mm. I kept it open during the pandemic. It was like $5 pizzas. I was like, send it. <laughs> <laughs> you would order Chuck E. Cheese pizza? Yeah. Like, during where, the pandemic. Delivered? Where well, is a Chuck E. Cheese? Well, I don't know about LA, but in NorCal, like, they all closed right during the pandemic because you. But they're still so open for pizza. For pizza and like pizzas are usually like fifty dollars for one if you go while it's open. What? There's five dollars a pizza. Anyways, I think it's good. Um, American Girl dolls. Sure, like obviously I'm not gonna like not let River to play with them, but they do seem to be like a weird obsession in community. Like there's an intensity with this whole American doll community. There, there really is. It seems unhealthy. I almost. went to an American Girl doll store, and they had a whole barber shop. Oh, where people there. were bringing their American Girl yeah. dolls and getting Ugh. their hair done. I went Did to you... the American Girl Cafe two months ago. <gasps> no, oh I want to go to that. <laughs> Wait, so you ate food with the dolls? Yeah. Did you bring your and American Girl And they sat her down like, on the table yeah. in the high chair? <laughs> they serve wine. 
Wait, where was this? In Chicago. <sighs> Allie, I need to know if you brought your doll with you. Oh, fuck yeah. Felicity was right there next to me. Oh, oh my God. God. That's actually one of my dreams. I'm going to... I've never had an American Girl doll, but I want to eat like dinner with them. I think it'd be I'll cute. loan you one. Did you, you did you always want an American Girl doll? No, but it was like this along the same lines of like dolls, like girl dolls. If you give it to a guy, it will like lead them down a certain path. So like I remember Should we going. Give you an American Girl doll for your birthday? They're too expensive. I'd, How much? You can w- have mine. It's that. still in the box. They're like um, two hundred a like a doll, right? They're like a hundred. They used bucks. to be like ninety when we were kids. They might have gone up. Yeah, it was like $100. We all got one for our 11th birthday. My parents took my sister and I to the American Girl doll store, but because I was a guy, I wasn't allowed to get a doll, so I got like the pet. I had a My Buddy. Oh, I had a My Buddy too. Yeah. What, what's a My I have a picture buddy? with a My, my buddy. buddy. It's like a, it's a doll for boys. It's like Cabbage Patch ish. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I've never heard These, of it. Was, no, Justin, we need to get you like a retro one. We need to get you a doll. My dolls, Buddy. My not Buddy. Well. I want to get you a, a lookalike doll. That's what a My Buddy is, right? Well, My Buddy looked like me. Really? Yeah. I was a little kid when Mar when when my buddy like popped on the scene. Mm. You know, do they still exist? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. think so. I, but I got my... a lookalike doll from American Girl, um, for my sixth birthday. But I told my parents that I didn't want her to look like me. I wanted the black girl because she was prettier. So my uh-huh. lookalike does not Papa? look like me. Papa. I think we should get Justin a look a look like me American Girl. I, I'm not too expensive. An active website for my buddy. Would you appreciate it? I would appreciate it, but also we can just go to the cafe and they rent you, like they'll lend you a doll to eat dinner with, right? I'll Allie? bring you one. Don't worry. Okay. About That's it. not yeah. fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a doll to eat dinner with? She sits in a high chair, like on the table, yeah, right? Yeah, she does. I think that's cute. I have pictures from New Year's. I'll send them to you. I think the OG American Girl dolls are now worth a lot of money. What Probably. about the one that's still in the box? Mine that's still in the box. Yeah. <laughs> Probably worth a lot of money. I Double. guess my uh, my OCD is going to pay off for me now. <laughs> That's why you all didn't my open untouched it? toys. Yeah, I didn't open my American. My American Girl is still in perfect condition, along with a couple Barbies. How do you think American Girl dolls are born? Because I always think of like Cabbage Patch dolls, and have you seen the videos what? of like you go to whatever made, the he- Justin? I hate to burst your no, bubble. but like okay, but if you've seen videos <laughs> of the headquarters, so they birth Cabbage Patch dolls. What? Like they have like- Cabbage Patch Cabbage Patch kids with the cards, the trading cards. Oh, those were- <laughs> A uh, junk pail kids. Junk d- d- the junk pail. Was it junk pail? Which one's junk I don't know pail? What that is. Junk pail cabbage kids. Cabbage patch kids. No, there was junk pail too. Were those like the bad cabbage patch kids? Yeah. Oh, that explode. No, or... they were like car. They were crazy. Oh, it's literally cabbage patch. Cabbage kids. patch kids were so scary to me. This is when we pretended that Kit had a drinking. Problem. Garbage pail kids. Yeah, je- garbage pail kids. Yeah, <laughs> those car. Those trading cards. They were crazy. Oh, Ellie's living the life. Look, this was Kit. Just helping yourself to some yeah, wine. That's fucking weird. Oh my god! All right, well we have a great episode for you lined up this week. Also, big week. We got Monica and Tyler Cameron on going deeper. An Ooh. excellent episode of Reality Recap tomorrow. It's a wild, wild week as always. Hold on to your butts. Let's get to our callers. Don't forget to send your questions at asknickatthevilehouse.com for all things Ask Nick texting office hours. You know the drill. All right, let's get to our question. Choices matter. What's your time with Nick? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. All right, how's it going? Hi, my name is Mary and I'm 23. And I'm wondering if I can sleep with two guy friends in the same friend group. Like have sex? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Good clarification. I mean, of course you can, you know. Why do you want to? So I've been hooking up with one of them for about a month now. Okay. Um, And it's going really well. I really like him. Okay. Um, but he's in a long distance open relationship. Oh. Um, Newly open. Um, I think he partially opened it to have sex with me. Um, So we've been hanging out a lot. Gotcha. Um, and uh, we're 100% certain that his partner is aware of your existence? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've. He's told me many times that they've talked about it. Yeah, I've never met her, but... So we're not 100% very sure. Very positive. We're just 100% sure that he's told you about it. Yes, but I, I trust him 100%. Okay. Um, How old is this guy? He's 24. <laughs> Are 24-year-olds getting into open relationships? It's more common. Like, there's not, it's not a stigmatized thing anymore, so... Interesting. Why? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Why, why is he <laughs> yeah. in an open relationship? Um, That's what... I'm not really exactly sure about. I think he's been dating her for a few years and they're very serious. I know she knows his whole family and they're all really close. Um, 
but they've been long distance for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And he just said that over the last couple of years, he's just realized that he doesn't want to only be with one person. And it just makes more sense to him to have freedom. Um, and he said that she also agreed. I think she didn't want to do it at first, but now she's also seeing other people. Gotcha. How long have they been together? Um, Are they like high school I, sweethearts yeah. or something? No, they met um, in undergrad. So gotcha. They All were. Right. Uh, and tell me about this other guy that you want to have sex with. Mm -hmm. So he's in the same firm group. He's really good friends with um, the guy that I'm hooking up with now. Is he aware uh, that you're hooking up with him? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, I think they've talked about it oh. a lot. I think kind of the whole lead up um, where the guy I'm hooking up with now, I think before we started hooking up with each other, he liked me for a while and I think he had been talking to his friends about it. So they've kind of been present for the whole rise of it. Okay. So everyone's communicating, everyone's talking, everyone knows everything, yada, yada, yeah. yada. Um, clearly, you see some red flags or potential hurdles otherwise you wouldn't be calling in what are the potential problems that you're concerned about as you see it yeah i just i don't know what it would even look like like if i i mainly i think part of me has been holding back with the guy i'm hooking up with right now just because i know that he does have somebody else mm -hmm. um i would love to just only date him if he wanted to do that and if that were the case then i wouldn't even be thinking about have you communicated that with guy? him no um, just because I, I feel like he, if that were an option, then he would have done it. Um, I don't know. I feel like he must know that I like oh, him a lot. I don't know. Um, I mean, he's a 24 year old guy. I don't know how intuitive he is. Maybe I, we're very open and I get Clearly. confused by a lot of yeah. the things that he says were like, I think it very much is that like, well, when we're here that I think to everybody watching, it seems like we're dating. We spend like all of our time together. We're always uh, together. How much uh, energy do you spend trying to figure out your relationship with guy number one? Not that much anymore. Now I'm just kind of every day I see him and we just spend a lot of time and I don't. You see him every day? That... Yeah. How are you like? Yeah. Hooking... Um, and we're hooking up like, I don't know, either every night, sometimes. We skip. When night, does he but... see his actual girlfriend? Um, she lives in a different city. No, I get so... that. But like, do oh, yeah. they talk oh. every day too? Or like, no, they don't, don't even talk every day. Mm -mm. When does he go see her? He's visited her once this semester and then she visited him once. Jeez. Um, they seem, I don't, I don't know what it, that's part of why I'm confused because it doesn't seem like he wants to be with her that much and like he'll tell me all these things about like how amazing i am and i don't know he'll say things like like this is the best sex i've ever had um, okay it's very a lot every time 24 year old guy uh, thing to say that's nice i mean good <laughs> flex on you you know does he say anything else about you or how he makes uh, how you make him feel yeah i mean all just really amazing things he says that i'm so beautiful and nice and so in that and it all just feels very, I mean, I, I feel it coming from him. Okay. You feel his affection. You like, you know, it's yeah. good. And so back to this other guy. Yes. So the other guy, I also have liked um, the whole time. What do you mean um, liked? You think he's cute or like, what do you, you know, what do you yeah, mean liked? Yeah. Very, very cute. Very smart. And the, um, the three of us have hung out a lot. We hung out um, before I started hooking up with the first guy. Yeah, hang out. We'd go to each other's houses all the time and do things. Um, but then the first guy, I think, just started, especially after he opened up his relationship, we got really close really fast. Um, it was also around the same time that I broke up with my boyfriend of last year. And then as soon as everything opened up for me, then the guy that I'm hooking up with now kind of filled that role really quickly. And I never had time to really even think about exploring anything with the second guy. And now it feels kind of impossible a little bit where when we hang out now, the three of us, it's very much where like guy one and me are stuck together and we're just really close knit. So change the you, dynamic. You and both of these guys are often hanging out just the three of you? Yes. Okay. 
or with like sometimes there, there's another guy too oh, that okay. um they like four of us but is this like something you're just considering on your own have you talked you've talked with guy number two about you guys exploring things you haven't no i i don't know i don't really know if i can i don't know if that would really just mess everything up because i've i don't know guy one and me have talked about like also having group sex or doing stuff with multiple people before and we're both very open to that but when i brought up the second guy is a part of that um first guy he didn't seem super he's like that's not who i was thinking about um necessarily with multiple people like his buddy yeah, yeah. which i guess but so now i <laughs> He's probably thinking know. about I, you and another girl. Yeah. I mean, listen. Or, or also another guy. I mean, both. He, there is, like, there are other guys. Gotcha, but, um, gotcha. So I just, yeah, I, I don't know if, because I, I, don't, I don't know what that would look like, even, like, if I did talk to the second guy and, like, it went well and we maybe started doing stuff, but then, like, one to three of us or when we're, like, all hanging out kind of in a group, I don't know what that would mean with, like, who I... Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't very, like stuck to the first guy. It's I don't know like either, you know, like uh, <laughs> I've never dabbled in this stuff before. That being said, you know, I just what does your gut tell you? You know, it's just like this is at, at the end of the day, I think it's, you know, whatever sex positivity. You guys clearly are very communicative. That's great. You know, you're. New generation is destigmatizing, you know, group sex and open relationships and like. Sure. I think it's fine to destigmatize these things, but there's also like, again, back to, you know, sex positivity. I, I think there's sex positivity, which is an acceptance of sex and being and, and, and recognizing that sex can and is at times positive. Uh, sex positivity can be, again, just not judging any one person for their sexual preferences. But sex positivity isn't acting like sex is this like, nothing thing that everyone just like freaks out unnecessarily about and isn't significant and meaningful to a lot of people. And I feel like a lot of people, especially younger people, confuse sex positivity with like not having a reverence for sex. Because I think sex is an incredibly powerful thing. One of the most powerful things out there. It involves feelings. Uh, it can be very intense. It can be confusing. Uh, you can tell yourself, oh, we're just hooking up, and then you can uh, uh, develop feelings even if you didn't want to, so to speak. We can deny our feelings to ourselves for the sake of avoiding awkward situations, all of the above. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it's great that you're open and all, but like, I think you need to start listening to yourself about what you're really feeling about this situation. And I think you need to be careful not to... Well, I'm cool, like taking pride in being chill and cool with all of the above. Oh, I'm just like, I'm, I'm this open and, and progressive, you know, woman of 2024 and I'm, I'm down for it all. And again, if you are great, but like, also it's okay to recognize when you're not okay with something. It's okay to recognize that something makes you, that, that you're not down for X, Y, or Z. It's okay to recognize that you didn't expect to have feelings for this guy, for guy one, but now, whether you wanted to or not, you do. And you shouldn't ignore those feelings. You shouldn't deny those feelings. You shouldn't pretend those feelings don't exist. And you shouldn't be quiet about those feelings because it's inconvenient for him. Feelings change. Feeling evolves. When two adults enter into a sexual relationship like you two did, you both need to recognize that like, how things started isn't how our things are going to end. That things might evolve. And both of you can't say to the other person, well, I told you that when we first started, it was only going to be emotionless sex. Like, okay, congratulations. You know, like, you know, but you're, you're human beings and feelings can evolve and change. And if you're going to enter in a sexual relationship, then you guys always have to enter a relationship that is open for checking in and, hey, are, are we still, is this still, are we still comfortable with this dynamic or how have your feelings changed? You know, how much of that has gone in to this relationship. Clearly your feelings have evolved. And as you said, you're getting more and more confused about what your relationship status is with this guy. And you just keep going back to the original upfront expectations that you guys set that he has a girlfriend. You're this other side chick that, you know, 
you can do what you want and he's doing what he wants, but you guys are hanging out and having sex. But now you are, you are developing expectations of him regardless of the fact that you guys are communicating those expectations. And what's confusing to you is that you don't feel like you can talk about what your expectations are. You're, and when I say expectations, it's your feelings, your feelings of like, well, you, again, you have an expectation. Your expectation is that you talk every day. You guys didn't sit down and say like, oh, we're going to talk every day. You have to talk to me every day, but you guys have talked every day. You're hooking up most days and now you're just expected. But what happens if that changes? What happens if he all of a sudden, what happens when his girlfriend calls up and says, hey, listen, I really miss you. I want us to reevaluate re re our relationship. And I'm not saying we don't have an open relationship, but I need to see you more. And I want you to come out for three weeks. And I want you in those three weeks, I want you to really focus on us. And I don't want you talking to her or these other people. Are you going to like, what, how is that going to make you feel? I would hate that. Yeah. Um, and that <laughs> part of it also, I can't even imagine. I don't know. I don't know how he would react. From what I know of him and from feelings I get, I would like to think that he wouldn't want to do that at all. I mean, it's his girlfriend. Yeah, but I just, I, I don't see it. I don't see, you know, time. Here's my big thing, and I'm going to sound like the older, boring, hopefully not condescending guy, you know, but like if you are mature enough to have an open relationship with anyone, then you should be mature enough to have these types of conversations with these people. And you should be mature enough to check in with each other and say, hey, can we talk about what's going on? Things have changed. I wanna communicate with you how I'm feeling about our current situation. I wanna ask you some questions about your situation. And right now, I'm not getting the sense that, that you're comfortable enough to do that. No, and it also, it doesn't, feel real it feels very easy to kind of just pretend that yeah we're dating here um she's visiting next weekend um he has a concert he has an event so it's the first time that she's gonna be here at something i'm gonna be at That'd be fucking wild so that that will show a yeah. lot um that will also be weird because like everybody here at school only sees us two together so i think they all and think what is your plan to address her coming. Um, I mean, we've, we've talked about her coming and, you in know, he's what capacity, he, what have you um, talked about? He, he mentioned, so he said, I, you know, I know his concert's coming up and he told me like, you know, she's probably going to come. I don't even know if he knows for sure. Um, but he said, she's probably going to be here. And all he said is that he just said it and how, like, he was like, it'll be weird with other people watching, like thinking about what other people are thinking is going to be. A little weird he said that he would like us to meet me and her what he said something where he was like she said before that she wants to meet you and now after like we've been spending so much time he's not so sure anymore but that was we talked about that like a week ago and we haven't talked about it then how did that make you feel do you want to meet her yeah why i, I um size up your competition kind of oh well i want to see also just because i have I think I'm still very, might just be like my ego, but because I'm here, it's like, I just, I feel like he likes me more. So yeah, I don't. That's why, yeah. You want to size up your competition. Yeah. Um, and I think it would be hard. I mean, I haven't, I have no idea what it will be like. I know I, I will feel a different kind of like weirdness and sadness if like I see them like being really close and I can see that they actually really like each other. If that happened, it would change things a lot. For me yeah but it also might just be very confusing for you to see you know you might take his awkwardness as a sign that he really likes you but he just feels awkward like how do you really know how to read the situation i don't know what um, i think it's you should also do because he's gonna be like we're both graduating yeah um this semester so we're gonna be going to different places he's moving to the same city that um she's in now he said they aren't planning on living together i don't know i think we we've kind of mentioned he's like oh like i want to visit you and you know i'd like you to visit me and we're kind of in a field where we're always going to be around each other forever kind of uh um, forever probably we're in um the same like job thing and it's a small world which is what music classical music kind of okay like, we have all the same friends and same like checks out and, yeah mm -hmm. It, you still might have an opportunity not to be in each other's lives forever. I mean, I get it small, yeah, but, but like... I think we would both like... I, I just want to. And also, it's You weird like them we, right now. Yeah, of we course. We started being friends at the same time. Um, 
like just really close friends. That's the big part of it. My, again, at, at the risk of sounding like slightly condescending in the, the old dude, my read in the situation, and I'm going to give you like just very direct answer. As I think you guys are trying to do grown up things, but being very immature about it. Yeah. Well, it, cause it feels, it still feels like school. It feels very. Sure. Schooly, but like, but you know, I, I like it. I, it's sure. Fun. Listen, like, I get why there's a lot of fun about what you're doing in the open relationship and you get to have your cake and you it too. And it almost probably feels exciting and wrong and weird kind of at the, the same time, but you're how old? 24? Uh, three, 23. 23. Okay. Yeah. Still in the young, but like you're going to grow up fast and you know what, near, you know, you know, me 25 and who knows, you might have a quarter life crisis. I don't know. I know I did, but I'm just saying like, you are an adult, you know, and you're doing adult things at a minimum. What I think you should do if you haven't figured it out already is I think you need to sit them down and tell them exactly how you feel about them. And it's not because you have any idea how he's going to answer that question. And right now you're not saying things to him because you're assuming his answers. You're assuming he's going to pick her. You're assuming he's going to say, well, Hey, like, you know, like, it's not what we talked about. Hey, I'm eventually going to move to her city. At the end of the day, if two people want to make it work, they make it work. And his way of making it work with her is to have sex with you. And I, you know, I can't speak for him, but again, I don't, I don't think you guys are handling this in the most mature and adult way. And I think it's, this has a recipe for disaster in the long run. I think you should challenge yourself to start communicating about how you feel about every feeling you have towards him. Because you're right, he's not your boyfriend per se, but he is someone that you're building an emotional connection with that's missing some really important elements, you know, like trust and, and, and safety. You don't, you, you, you can't possibly feel emotionally safe with this guy because you don't even know if you're, you know, if you're able to ask him certain questions or tell him exactly how you feel. And that matters. And your solution think, is to maybe have sex with his friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just don't know because I guess I don't, what I would be asking, I don't know the purpose of why I'd be asking because I, I would love to tell him that like I like you so much and, you know, if you were open to it, I would, you know, love to just date you and yeah, let this be a thing and be, but I, I don't have a, a second part of that where I'm like, but if you can't do this, then like I'm out or cause I, I don't, I wouldn't want to be out. <laughs> either way so it doesn't well, really matter uh, what his answer will be back to when i say you guys are doing adult things but kind of in, being immature about it again not to sound but like life as you get older is going to be about making tough choices you are eventually not going to be able to have everything you want when you want it you're going to have to make sacrifices of the things that matter most to you you know you're going to have to make compromises that is life that's adulthood and right now, you guys are still very much operating the like, let's figure out ways we can have everything we want without making any sacrifices. And your way of having sacrifices is just ignore, ignore and deny your feelings. And you are comfortable with being confused right now. And that's fine because you have very little responsibility. You're only responsible for yourself and things like that. But that's going to change eventually, you know? And so, yeah, like you might have to say no to him. You might have to say goodbye to him because like you can't control how you feel about him. And this is only gonna get more and more confusing. You know, it's really going to suck is if you don't have a conversation with this guy, she comes out, he is somehow able to navigate that weekend without you saying, fuck this. He likes her more than me. I don't know. Or whatever. Let's say she comes out and he's able to figure out how, when she goes back to whatever city she lives in, you guys just kind of go back to your normal routine. And then he moves. And event, eventually someone in this threesome is going to say, I can't do this anymore. I don't know. Unless you guys decide to have a thruple and you, the three of you get married, I guess that's a possibility, but I'm not getting the vibe. That's what you're down for in the long run. I'm getting the vibe that like right now you are down to be a 23 year old, like pretty chill, sexual, like you're, ex you're exploring your sexuality. You're having fun. You're in this exploratory life, which is great. And 23, what a great time to do that. But you're also kind of not acknowledging some of your other needs. And for the sake of being very exploratory with your sex life, you, you are sacrificing other aspects of your emotional needs. And, and you can only ignore your, deny your needs and ignore your needs for so long. They will eventually show up and say, you need to do this. And if time and life forces the issue, if you don't get the answer you want, you will feel out of control. And it will be a 
harder pill to swallow because you won't have a choice to make. You will have to accept whatever the universe says is going to happen, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. And it's because I would never want to do this. Like, I wouldn't ever want to be in an open relationship. Um, that's 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 crazy for you to say. You are in one. Well. Nope. Not well. Oh my! Well, yes. You are. Yes. You you are. Well, I, you're I'm in, not even you have, in a relationship. You right are. Right yes, now. you are. Just, you are in a relationship with this guy. You call it whatever the fuck you want, but you are in a relationship with it. A relationship to me, and again, I'm just some some dude without any professional experience whatsoever. But in my humble opinion, a relationship starts when people have expectations of each other. You can call it whatever the fuck it is, what you want. But when you when you wake up and you have an expectation of someone else to meet your emotional needs, you're in a relationship, and you have that of yeah. him. Yeah, but I, it's only him. What do you? Um, sure. So like, but like you have I, to share him. Yeah, yeah you're not well, getting. It the, doesn't feel like I'm not sharing. Right. I know. Yes, I know you I are. Am, but I think it's easy because right now I'm. You're right. Not. Most days you do. You're right. You're right. Most days you can ignore the fact that he has a girlfriend, but it's always there. It's always in the back of your mind. Every day and every day it's going to get harder and harder. Every, it might not be like super hard, but every, every day you're going to be like, I want to ask him this. I want to expect this from him. Maybe it's a trip you want to take. I don't know. You're, you're, you are going to evolve. Yeah. We all evolve. Nothing stays the same. It either grows or dies. You are getting too good at ignoring your needs for the sake of staying connected to him and letting him call the shots. I'm just saying at some point, you aren't going to be able to do that. And I would rather see you take control of your life. And in addition to just being some like sexual positive and exploratory young lady, I'd also want you to like invoke your power and take control and make decisions for yourself and sometimes make tough choices. And like, listen, you don't have to make a choice, but you should at least, you know, cause you're like, I was like, I think you, I said to you, Hey, I think you should communicate your feelings and your response is, well, I don't know if I'm in a position you, you assumed his answer, right? Because basically you said, well, if he tells me no, then I'm not ready to give up on him or the sex or whatever it is. So you are already assuming his answer. You already know his answer. And then you are deciding what you are already going to do with that answer. And, and that answer is to just kind of ignore your emotional needs because you think you, you know, your physical needs are more pressing. And maybe they are for a certain extent, but like, that's not you taking control of your life. Yeah. Well, also, I feel like he gives me the emotional, um, gives me both. Yeah. But I think. Yeah. Oh, he definitely feels a lot of your emotional needs, but not all of it. That's for sure. Yeah. And no, I think cause I, I'm realizing that it's related to why I'm having trouble figuring out what to do with the second guy, because right now I'm in this middle place where what's stopping me from just like openly flirting and doing things with the second guy is that. A part of me is like, what if first guy would just want to date me and that would hurt him to see us together? Exactly. But then the reason I want to do anything with the second guy is because I'm only here for like two more months. And if it's never going to be anything like permanent or long term with the first guy, then I'll be upset that I wasted this time and I didn't explore things with the second guy. I mean, yeah, you kind of answered your question. Yeah. Yourself. I, listen, you, you, my, my advice is you need to tell this guy, now, number one, how you feel. And it has nothing to do with what you think he's going to say. It's because you owe it to yourself to just put it out in the universe how you actually feel about him. And that's what two mature adults do. And if you can be in an open relationship, which again, you are a part of one, then you should be able to have these types of conversations. And if you can't, then you're not, in my opinion, emotionally mature enough to be in this type of relationship. It's one thing to just fuck around and be in a hookup culture and to sleep around, but like you are building an emotional connection with this guy with a lot of restrictions on, on how you're able to operate. Yeah. And you're, and yeah, you are no, convincing yourself that you have to accept certain things you wouldn't normally accept if you didn't agree to be in this type of relationship. But they're like, well, I agreed. So then, you know, again, you don't, your feelings have changed. You need to recognize that and you need to communicate that to him. And then as two adults, you can figure out where you go from there. You don't have to make a decision, but yeah, you, you yeah I think I didn't realize how much um, not knowing was affecting and also knowing that I can talk to it, talk to him, but not have to have like a decision or anything also yeah well yeah but you're right my guess is he'll probably like you know it's fuck it's most guys most people don't want to give things up for nothing and this is a guy who's 
<laughs> can sleep with two women at the same time. Not necessarily at the same time, but like, so he's not going to give that up very easily. And to be totally honest, like just like any other relationship, regardless if it's open or not, for you to get what you want and what you ultimately want is a relationship with this guy, let's not pretend that's not the case. You're going to have to say goodbye. You're going to have to say, well, I like you too much. I don't want to share you anymore. I'm sorry if this is inconvenient for you. I'm sure she'll hate me for this, but this is how I feel. And if you can't give me what I want, then I have to stop this. And he's going to kick and scream and throw a fit. And he's going to say, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to have to walk away. And he's going to have to miss you. And he's going to have to realize what he isn't getting that you can offer him. Because you're right. You probably meet so many of emotional needs. He doesn't even fully appreciate you because he's just, you know, he's got this girlfriend. He's got you, you know, he, he doesn't have to appreciate you. You haven't made him appreciate you. So you're going to have to almost certainly walk away and say, listen, I think I don't, I don't care if you're moving to her hometown. I, you know, I, I do not care. What I care about is we have something great. We have something special. I've really grown to care about you. I think you care about me. I don't want to share you anymore. And I want to figure it out and make it work regardless of what we ever have to do. And that's what I want. That's crazy. I didn't, I, I you know, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, what's, I should. What's that's crazy just, about I that? I can't even. It's not as like, crazy as having like, an open relationship. And what's so crazy to me <laughs> is like the old 43 year old. And listen, I'm as sex positive as the next guy and I'm as not judgmental. But like, isn't it kind of telling that like as a society, we're all like, you know, getting naked, exchanging fluids, whipping our dicks around, you know, like sending nudes. But like having a conversation about our feelings is fucking nuts. Yeah, I just it's I just couldn't even imagine walking away I don't know at what point I know but I do know that like if she were here like if she lived here and we were doing the same thing I wouldn't be able to do it and like if he wanted to also see another girl here like you know if he wanted to add like another girl like another girl that he was kind of seeing here I couldn't handle that yeah, these, you're saying some profound things that I think I don't think you realize how profound they are like you clearly have very a lot of restrictions on this relationship and he, you know, and you need to communicate this stuff. I mean, I have no idea about the relationship. It sounds like it's just eventually going to end And who, uh, who knows he, who she's, she's sleeping with or who he's a developed, she, who she might be developing feelings for. I don't know, but you like this guy, you care about him. you you it sounds like you think there's really something good here, you know, and maybe you started this open relationship with the best of intentions. It's like, hey, it's 2024. We should be able to do this. And he's not ready to say goodbye. And hey, we're like, we're super hip and trendy, you know, progressive sexual animals. But like now at the end of the day, you develop some feelings, you care about them, you think there's potential here and you should want to fight for that. Because, I mean, yeah. if you listen to this show, it's hard enough. For me. People are having a hard time even meeting people they give a shit about. And you give a shit about him. And he gives a shit about you. And instead of just going through the motions and taking what he's willing to give you, I think you should fight for him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I can do that. And if, if he tells you no. Now, the fact that this guy's your, this other guy, back to this other guy for a second, I think you should just put him on pause forever. If you really care about this guy, I mean, because what I'm saying is if you actually take yeah. my advice and you fight for him and he, again, let's assume he's going to first tell you no, because that's, I mean, that's just, that's just what he's going to do. He's a guy, he, you're, you're telling him you can no longer get all this stuff for free. He's going to, people throw temper tantrums when you take something away from them and going to fuck his friend as an immediate response isn't going to get you to where you want to be. There are plenty of other fish in the sea. If eventually down the road, you say goodbye to him, you enforce that boundary. He says, all right, well, sorry, see to go. But, and he stays with the other girl and you finally get your answer. Like, well, this guy was never really going to pick me and you sincerely want to try it with this other guy, then go nuts. But make sure there's a clear separation here. Like, you know what I'm saying? You need to mm -hmm. really be done with guy number one before you dabble with guy number two. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right. Well, I am, I am all in. I'm invested in, on, on what, what happens next with you. It's fascinating. I appreciate you calling in and having this conversation with me. But Yeah, thank you. So, I mean, I, thank you so much. I, I realized lots of things. Um, I also feel like I, I can. I'm still worried. I still feel like... Like, I'm going to have this talk with him. I'm excited to do it. I can't see myself. Call, like in, call, no, call, call like, back with him on. 
<laughs> maybe I don't know I feel like either way I'm still gonna like even if he says like no he doesn't want to break up with his girlfriend I would still want to keep seeing him until I leave like for the next two months okay um I, I can't imagine not I hear you I am just here to say the best things you'll ever have in your life will come at the greatest cost yeah nothing like you're in classic human music you know Mm-hmm. Are you good? Yeah. How much work have you put into it? A lot. How much has sacrifices have you made for it? Nothing, because it's all that really matters. So actually, you yeah. haven't had many. I don't like, know if I time. Oh, well, maybe sacrifices the wrong but word. It, but it's like it's a good thing. But I, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying, yeah, the best yeah, things, no. the best things, the things you value most, will either be the things you work at the hardest, or have to make the biggest sacrifices, or the most comp- compromise. Why? Because like otherwise, then the things that you we have in abundance, we never appreciate. Yeah, I think I just, I, like, this guy is the best, like, it's, I don't know, it's the closest I've ever been to somebody, and it's the most fun, and it's the most where I can see yeah. how good it is, so I think I just, it just feels so easy and Those things are few now, and far so between, very- you know, so, I think it's worth, uh, ma- he needs to, re- again, I can't, I can't stress enough that he won't pick you until he realizes what he lost. Okay. So, Cool. Let me okay. know if I'm wrong. But I'll do um it. No, I yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh we'd love an update. And uh um, I will definitely, yeah. Wishing will, you all the best. Thank you. All right. Thank take you care. so much. You know, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, bye bye. Bye. This episode is brought to you by Care of Care, Care of. of. Care of is a health and wellness company that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. That's right. Well, we all know that it's good to take vitamins, but you know what happens? We always forget to take our vitamins. And then when we travel, boy, we we take them even less. But care of, not with care of. No, no, no. They will customize your vitamin plan and send you these cute little individual daily packs to make sure that you are taking the vitamins when you need them. The best part about Care of is knowing that their vitamins and all the products are research-backed quality vitamins because not all all vitamins are created equal. No, 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 no. Care of offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research-backed ingredients and optimal doses. All you have to do to get started is take a short, simple quiz online about your lifestyle and health goals, and Care of will give you a doctor-backed recommendations. It's that easy. And that quiz just like helps put everything together. I'm looking at the list of things that were put together for me for care of. And it's so accurate and customized to me, like whether it's, you know, adding in some iron, a probiotic blend, uh, some sleep blend, because I struggle with that as well. Like if you basically want a customized regimen, stop guessing, start, stop trying to figure out what works for you and trying a bunch of different things and then forgetting to take them. Just go with this because you'll never forget to take them. They're easy to pack. And it's literally your exact routine that you and your body need. For 50% off your first Care Of subscription order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter promo code VIALL50. Again, for 50% off your first Care Of subscription order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code VIALL50. Quince. You got to upgrade that closet today and do so without spending a ton of money on iconic pieces like cashmere crew neck sweaters, leather jackets, versatile float knit activewear. Quince has it all. And the cool part is it's not that crappy fast fashion. It is high quality items that will make your closet stand out and pop without breaking the bank. No, it's unheard of. You could get a Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater for $50. Unheard of. True. Unheard of. The best part is that all of Quince items are priced 50 to 80 percent less than similar brands. Also, it's good to know that Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. We love that. I have some of their active wear. And let me just tell you, they are so like like cinching, tight, flattering, comfortable. Some of the best activewear pieces I own are from Quince. Sorry, if you are tired of shopping at the same stores with the high prices and low selections, you got to check out Quince. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Grammarly. Grammarly. 
mean? Well, if you are tired of people judging you for your grammar, punctuation, all of the above, improper tone in your emails, you got to check out Grammarly. Get yourself and your team Grammarly today and increase your efficiency at work while making sure that you sound smarter. All at the same time, 96% of Grammarly users report that Grammarly helps them craft more impactful writing. Grammarly works across 500,000 apps and websites by understanding your writing in context. Grammarly provides relevant, personalized suggestions. Their tone suggestions help you navigate even the most difficult work conversations. That's right. I mean, it's amazing what they can do. Stop wasting all this time proofreading your emails just to make sure that you don't sound stupid. Just get Grammarly to help save you time increase your efficiency, and make you look and act more professional. Also, high school, college students, grad students, anyone who's writing papers, the amount of time you usually build out in your schedule once you've written it to proofread or you're asking your friends to proofread it or give it, like, give advice and feedback on it, just zap. Done. Grammarly will handle it. They'll look over all your papers. They'll help you rewrite things. They'll give you feedback and suggestions. Like, truly, my writing, I thought, was already pretty good, but exponentially got better once using Grammarly. Make a bigger impact at work with Grammarly. Sign up and download for free at Grammarly.com slash podcast. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com. Grammarly.com slash podcast. Easier said, done. How's it going? Good. My name's Abby and I'm 28. How can we help Abby? So I lied to my boyfriend and now everything I do or say is a lie in his perspective. What did you lie about? So I live with a few roommates here. And just to preface, my boyfriend lives here too. But my roommates are significantly younger than I am. And they invited some people over. Okay. I want to try something out here for fun. Give me, sure. give me the one sentence answer as to why you lied. And then give me the backstory. And then give me the backstory. Okay. But I want, I want the short answer, not the explanation first. Because the explanation first sounds like you're trying to justify it, whether you are or not. And I just sure. want to hear the reason first, and then we can get into the explanation. So I accepted attention from somebody that's not my boyfriend. Okay. All right. Now explain. So, yeah. So my roommates are significantly younger than me, which is no excuse, obviously. But um, they invited some people over. And, and your roommates be, are all women? Yes, okay. except for my boyfriend who lives here too. And they invited some people over and also they're single women as well. So let that be what it is. But um, we had, you know, kind of a dirty situation where we were all drinking during the day. And then that night we all went downtown. And while we were there, I kind of got to know some of our friends a little bit better and everything was fine. Um, the following week, a similar situation, except, um, we just exclusively went downtown and we were drinking, uh, that night I actually accepted dude's number and he tried to kiss me that night and I didn't say no, but like, I didn't kiss him, but I didn't say no to giving him my what, what, contact what, information. What led to you accepting a guy's number? <sighs> I don't know. I feel like a dirt bag about it. I've kind of walked through it with my therapist a bit and I can't pass blame off anybody else. I just liked the attention okay, yeah. and yeah, I'm not I asking for some like complicated answer. Like I, I appreciate the honest and simple answer. You liked the attention and sounds like you didn't consider anyone else's feelings in that moment other than the attention that you were feeling. Yeah, it was selfish all in all okay and so that happened and like we didn't stay in direct contact at all like he would snapchat me on occasion like if i were to post something to my story he would respond to it and then it would be like a simple like laughing face emoji or something like that and then so when the did following he, week when did he get your snapchat that night and your before number? he tried to kiss me yeah okay and so when you say he tried to kiss you and you didn't say no, does that mean he kissed you? No, it was more or less me not saying no to giving him my contact information. Gotcha. So, and like when he tried to kiss me, I did tell him, I was like, I have a boyfriend, like, you know, he lives with me. No. But even after that, so the following weekend, my boyfriend had a couple of friends over and they were eating mushrooms and I was not on mushrooms and I was trying to hang out with them and I kind of got the vibe that I wasn't wanted there. And that guy actually messaged me and asked me if I wanted to hang out with them, him, his brother and his friend. And so I left and I went and hung out with them and I ended up getting really drunk 
and stayed at the bar after those guys had left and um, called my boyfriend for a ride home at like one in the morning. And he didn't answer, understandably. He's probably sleeping or whatever. And then I called dude to give me a ride home. And he gave me a ride home. And we hung out in the backyard for like three hours drinking beers. This dude was in your, you and your boyfriend's backyard? Yeah, I know. (laughs) I mean, it's not funny. It's uh, It's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) clearly. I know. So how did... When, at what point did you like? Because well, at what point did you lie about it? Because at this point you're just doing. Because I you, so <laughs> when I got back inside, when I came inside, he, my boyfriend, woke up and confronted me, and asked me like, "What the fuck was going on?" And I lied and I said that dude gave me a ride home, and then I sat outside by myself, which was a lie. Okay. And then you, and so now it like when did he the trust? Well, when did he? Does your boyfriend know the full truth now? Yes, he does. And, and at what point did you come clean? And, and about a week after that. And it, so he confronted you. You were like, ah, I was hanging by myself. Did he know you were lying or? I think so. Yeah. I mean, we've been together for three years and I. It's and so like, then a week later, like what out of pure guilt, you said, hey, I've been li- I lied to you. This is what happened. I met this guy a couple weeks ago he hit on me tried to kiss me he asked for my number i gave it to him i don't have a boyfriend but i entertained a couple messages nothing really happened but like i definitely hung out with him and i liked the attention and then we hung out in the backyard like is that what happened or pretty much yeah so the way it came up and like the way you know me confessing came up was that my roommate had brought him up and asked him if he could come over and i was like no absolutely not and my boyfriend, he was like, well, why? And I had why to tell what? him, you know, like, why can't he come here? Like, what happened? Oh. You know, he was suspicious of me saying no to having him at my house. Okay. And then you came clean. How long, yeah. how long ago was this? Um, About three weeks now. Gotcha. How has he been towards you since? It's up and down. So I got a haircut probably two weeks ago. and. He accused me of wanting to do that to impress other men, even though the haircut had been booked for, you know, two, three months at that point. Yeah. I mean, like um, he's smiling right now and I, you know, like the, yeah. the, the reality is how old is your boyfriend? How long you've been together for three years? Yeah. How he's 32. He? He's 32. Okay. Why do you, out of curiosity, like why did the two of you live with a bunch of other younger women? Because I just bought a house. Okay. And when I bought the house, me and my boyfriend were actually broken up at the time. And so I have a four bedroom and there's only one of me. And so I filled the space and now everybody's under a year lease and, you know, there's four of us here. Gotcha. And when the lease is up, are you going to, what's your plan? I think we're going to keep one, which is not this one that has come up in discussion. Um, she's going to stay and then we're debating getting one more roommate, which would be actually one of me and his mutual friends. Is this like a, you only can afford the house if you have tenants situation? It's a, I'm trying to pay off my student loans and like build up an emergency fund before I, you know, drop the cash flow. I guess. Understood. Okay. It's just like, I've had a lot of stuff come up. Like I had to invest like $15,000. So. I was going to be there and not have two roommates. What'd you invest well, $15,000 in? Into my full-time job. Okay. So they offered me a small, teeny, tiny ownership. So okay. Well, hopefully it came that, up out of nowhere. Hopefully and that now, yeah. pays off in the future. Yeah, I suppose. But they have me by the balls. So What is your job? I'm a genetic technologist is my formal title. Okay. Um, why I, did, that why, and then a research coordinator. It's like a small startup. Like, why did you have to invest? Um, it's not a small startup, but it is a smaller company. So they kind of um, the CEO is also like there every day. So it's owned by well, it was owned by four people total who all work there, and now it's about nine of us that own a small sliver of it. But they started the company about ten years ago and have kept it within the family essentially. So it's, I mean, I should get back 
at least half of my investment in the first two years. I'm just curious. I was just curious about that. Uh, why did you and your boyfriend break up in the first place? Uh, why did we break up in the first place? Um, so he's also starting a company, which is kind of going well, but it was a lot of stress on that end. And then we have slightly different priorities and not like the overall priority, but like the, I guess, timeline of these things. So like starting a family, um, owning a home was a big thing and like potentially getting married. So like, I wanted to buy this house. I wanted to kind of step forward with everything and, um, you know, start the new chapter in our lives. And he wasn't ready. And that's why I own the house and he doesn't at all. But me. Because when we broke up, I just kind of threw my, my cash at it because I had been saving to be. And he wasn't ready for what? Marriage, kids, all of the above? Yeah, because he's got his own company right now. And like all of his attention and money is going to that. Well, he is a cannabis grower. Oh, good for him. You, you, the way you said it, like, well, he wasn't ready. So I just decided to buy the house on my own. Like, thank God. You know, you're not married. You know, yeah. I do not understand why people who are dating, even if they're engaged, buy property together. Fucking nightmare. Might as well get married. You know, that's like a, that's a legal contract that you guys share together that it's not easy to get out of. That's basically what marriage is. You know, it's like a mini marriage that people yeah. just like do for like, I don't know what they think it's some sort of like financial benefit. I don't know. Like, oh, I get to own a house together. For me, it was more of the commitment is what I was looking for. Sure. But like, like if you want a commitment, actually get a commitment. Don't don't circumvent a commitment, you know, because that's that's an indirect way of getting a commitment. It's like, oh, you don't want to commit to me. You don't want to get an engagement. You don't want to have kids. But let's buy a property together because it's a good investment. You're selling it as a good investment. But what you really want, like you just said, is a commitment. And like that's it's it's disingenuous, not only to your boyfriend, but to yourself. Most importantly, like you're just kind of lying. It's like when people move in together because like they think it's going to save the relationship because the relationship has been having problems. And you're just like, well, let's move in because like we'll be forced to fall in love again. Again, I've done that. So like no judgment. But we do that sometimes. So. I think, like I said, you buying this house on your own with your own money and you own outright by yourself is incredibly, you were lucky that it, that it ended up that way because you made the smart decision without wanting to make the smart decision. It was like you reluctantly made the smart decision. And if you and your boyfriend continue to work through these problems that you're having, then all the better. You get married, then fine. You, you will share that property unless you do, you know, sign some sort of prenup or whatever. But sharing this house together wasn't going to save or fix or make your relationship better. You know what I'm saying? The problem that you called in for, the lying and the, you know wanting attention from your boyfriend. Boy, imagine how, if you own this property together, how you would feel, both of you, about the pressures of, you know, working through this problem. You know, like you don't want to work through this problem because you own property together. You want to work through this problem because you both want to stay together. Or you think it's worth it. My question to you is like, why do you think you did it? And do you really want to fix this relationship? I mean, I get you did yeah. for the attention, but why do you feel like you needed the attention? Insecure. I don't know. Maybe it's insecurity a bit where I guess this is the first long-term, I would say serious relationship that I've had or that I'm serious about them. Not like, it's a two-way street in this relationship. In the past, it's always been a bit more non-committal on my end. Okay. And I guess I, for a little bit, was playing out, like, if this relationship is worth being in. I don't know, like, testing the waters, which is, like, I feel like a dirtbag about it, but. I mean, listen, y'all made, you made a mistake. There's no sense in beating yourself up. Like, the question is now is, what do you want to do with the mistake that you made? Do you feel like this utter regret because you realize that you risked your boyfriend's trust and now you have to build that back, but you now know more than that. You scared yourself back in love almost where it's just like, holy shit, I almost like, thank God he's, he hasn't even broke up with me. There's still a lot of work to do, but holy shit, like I almost ruined a really great thing. Or are you still like, like, should we be, are you questioning your relationship still, but you, you know. Feeling guilty about what you did, fine. You know, you can feel guilty about what you did, regardless of how you feel about your relationship with your boyfriend. But you need to figure out how you feel about your relationship with your boyfriend. Yeah, and like, I want to be in a relationship with him. Your first, 
um, situation there where it's like, holy shit, like I almost blew up a really good thing. Okay. And that's where I'm at with it. And I, I just want to be able to rebuild that trust and to maintain it. And um, I'm struggling with that a little bit because everything I do, like I said, is, is become a lie, which is completely understandable. Like I, it's all, you're only understand- three weeks. I know this thing. it's a bit and, raw and for it, him and it's going to take time and our personality differences too. He's a very jealous person overall. Well, that's, and I knew that's that. And great. I know that. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of tiptoe around that most of the time. I'm just afraid that with the situation in the future, it's going to become a reoccurring thing. So like if we get an argument, let's say about the dishes, whatever, And then this will come up or like, am I not allowed to be around people anymore? Of course, of course you are. And that's obviously a ridiculous thing. You don't actually think that, you know, but like, I do do feel like a bit, I need to ask for permission on a lot of things now. Like what? I feel like I need to like check in and like, make sure he knows what exactly mean? what I'm doing, where well, I'm at. Like, well, I have to... what do you mean by that? Because that could mean so many different things. That could mean possessive and jealous and a little too controlling. And that could be like, of course you check in with your partner, you know, like which one, you know, it's like checking in permission where like, if it's something I want to do, it's more or less like I need to ask before I do, you know what I mean? Like if I wanted to go to the gym, I'd be like, Hey, I need like, I'm going to go to the gym. Is that cool? Not necessarily being like, is it okay with you if I go there? It's just. And that's just like always or was since in the past three weeks? Um, it's kind of been a bit of both a bit of, it's not necessarily as intense, like as it is now the last three years, but yeah, the last three weeks, it's been more or less having to do that. What conversations have the two of you had since this revelation about like, yeah, I guess, well, yeah. What have you guys, what have you said to each other? Like, where does he stand? I mean, I get everything. He, he, he thinks everything you say and do is a lie right now, but like, does he want to be with you? What have you said to him about your intentions with him? You know, again, you gave the haircut example. Like, yeah, right now he's feeling not enough. Literally, you know, you, he wasn't enough. You needed attention from some other guy and he wasn't enough. And so that he feels that right. So now you get a haircut. It's like, yeah, of course he's going to think. Is she doing this for me or is she just doing it for more attention from other men? Because clearly attention from me isn't enough. Now, he might need to step up and then giving you attention department, but that doesn't justify you needing attention from other spaces. But like these are natural feelings. But like what have you done in the past three weeks to try to, again, build back up not only the trust, but like his sense of, you know, value to you? You know, what have you said to him that made him feel like you were really appreciative of of him as a boyfriend, as a partner, you know, what have you said to him to make him feel more attractive and desirable, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, like some actions that I guess I've taken is, well, I quit drinking number one, um, because I felt like that was a huge, I guess, trigger. And obviously I like, I behave shitty when I was drunk. So quit drinking. I also put up a calendar in our bathroom that changes every month that just kind of lays out what's going on during the month and kind of uh, where I'm going to be at or whatever appointments, stuff like that, just so we can have a little bit more transparency and communication. We obviously have had discussions about the situation. He hasn't really said anything that he's going to do on his part, but like, I'm trying to get over the hurdle of being completely raw and transparent with everything. And I'm, you know, with being appreciated, telling, like telling him he's appreciated. Um, if I come home, something's done. Like I obviously will acknowledge that, you know, thank him, give him a kiss or whatever. Other than that, I mean, I don't really know what to do. Well, I, I don't like this whole, like, like this calendar thing. Is this new? Like, here's my schedule. Here's where you can find me. It's new. Yeah. That That's not going to build. last three weeks. That's not, that's not going to build back trust. I, I, I'm you a big think bo- so? I don't, I don't know. I, my therapist loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So I don't know. Cause she, cause that was like the biggest thing is like, I was afraid of 
his reaction number one is why I lied in the first place. Because that was what he said. Like, if you would have just told me straight up right away, this wouldn't have been a big issue. But I'm not sure if I even believe that even now. So putting the calendar up was my way of laying my life out and being completely vulnerable and honest about everything. I, I like the open communication. I like the idea that you guys don't have secrets. Again, I think it's it's a subtlety, but I think being considerate and letting each other know where you're going to be and checking in and, and hey, are you okay with me going so, you know, like, I don't think you need permission to go hang with your girlfriends. Yeah. I mean, you live together. So it's a little different when you live together. It's, it's, it is a little different. Um, hey, I'm going to go out with my friends. It's not like you're asking permission. You're just letting them know. Now, if you're going to go out with your friends and there's going to be other men around or the environment, you, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Are you putting yourself in an environment that could make them uncomfortable unless you give them a heads up, you know, then it's not so much asking permission, but it's like, Hey babe, I just want you to know, like, this is a situation. I want to know how you're feeling about it. I want to know what your comfort level is. How can I make you feel more comfortable? If this is going to make you feel uncomfortable, like I can totally understand if you don't want me to go. That's a huge, that, those ty that type of language and that type of conversation is a big difference in, do I have your permission to go to this thing? Mom, dad, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's all about I the do. vibe. Like he is not your parent. You d he doesn't have say over what you do or vice versa. But if you are in a relationship, you both should want to be considerate of the other person and their feelings. And you should want them to make sure that every situation you put yourself in and vice versa, the other person's comfortable with it. And, and it's you're, respectful. Yeah. And you're doing it because you want the other person to always feel comfortable and have the trust that you have nothing to hide. It's not making a calendar or being like, just, you know, this is where I'm going to be like. Nally and I know each other's passwords on our phones and we follow each other on our GPS, but it's not because like, you know how many times I've looked at her phone and looked at her messages and looked at like zero times. I just like, yeah. if I have to fucking look, man, it's just like, it's over for me, you know, but I have access to her stuff because like, you know, it's always like, can I use your phone to take a picture of our daughter or vice versa? There's, you know, we live together. So there's a million reasons why it just might be more convenient for me to have her password on her phone so I can go in and get the thing that she needs me to get and vice versa. It's not so that we can like spy on each other because we're both insecure. Right. But it's, it's, it's creating that environment of open and transparency that like you do have nothing to hide. You know, and things like that. And some of that, it's just, it's, it's sitting down with your partner and setting the table. It's like, listen, I fucked up. I recognize that. I really hurt you and I hurt our relationship and I feel sick to my stomach about it. And I want to sit down with you and I want us to work together. And I know like a lot of it comes with me, but at the same time, and maybe the, I don't know, and maybe a couples therapist can help navigate this. This does definitely sound like a, a job for a couples therapist because you guys have to get back on the same page. You have to reconnect. It's not going to be easy to do on your own because, you know, fine, you fucked up, whatever. But clearly there are things about the relationship and things the way he does things that bother you. That doesn't justify what you did, but him having a jealous side to him, you, you fucking up doesn't, doesn't validate his jealousy. Like, unfortunately, yeah. like in a bad way, it does. It's like, oh, well, I guess I have a right to be jealous. Like you shouldn't want, you shouldn't be with a someone who's unnecessarily jealous. Jealousy comes from an insecurity of either something you're doing or something that they're feeling from either about themselves or a past relationship, or maybe both. And now, it, yeah. my guess is yeah, his jealousy is. when you first started dating had to do more with him and his past. And now his jealousy is a combination of the two because of you, what you did. Well, he did really this. He was like, well, you're quitting drinking. You got your hair cut. Now you're going to the gym more, whatever. And he's like, that's exactly what my ex did when she had a cheating partner. Like, I guess she got caught and then like. Made so he's already been cheated on. And then, yeah. 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 Okay. So you're dealing with that. You're going to have to go out of your so way to. Different. Like, that doesn't matter. Like, it's irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> that's irrelevant. Um, <laughs> you have to build up again, not only the trust, but you have to build your it's, it's more about building back your connection than the trust. Right now, you guys are very disconnected. He, he, you are a threat to his insecurities. You are a trigger from his, for his past. It doesn't matter if you're completely two different women, you know, like at the end of the day, most people cheat because, you know, regardless of the reason why they needed the attention, some, you know, trigger from their past and daddy issues, whatever the fuck, who knows? Either way, you needed that validation that he wasn't good enough in that moment. And you might be totally different people, but like, oh, 
you know, it's not like it's not like there's one type of personality that cheats. Everyone cheats. Every every astrology sign doesn't matter if you're a Libra or an Aquarius or you're a Gemini. They've all cheated. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the fact that you're totally different isn't going to make him feel better. Yeah. And in his mind, you cheated. You know, you did. It, yeah. He yeah. He has said that. And you need to recognize that, you know, maybe you didn't fuck some guy, but like you it, 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 and on some ways it doesn't matter. Trust is trust and lies are lies. Like imagine how sick it would make you feel if it was the roles were reversed. All of a sudden some girl gives him his number. He could easily say no. He says yes. He's Snapchatting with her. All of Some girl is in your backyard of the house you own and he's just like flirting with her. And you know how people work. Your boyfriend knows how it works, right? I'm sure you told him everything, but you can't possibly tell him everything. You didn't tell him about every little glance and every little laugh that you guys had and every little joke that made you giggle and feel good about yourself or made you feel sexy. You didn't say that. And obviously you didn't because that would be fucking cruel if you did. But you're, you know how this, you know how flirting works. And so does he. He's playing that in his mind. Again, this is more about you guys building back, uh, back to cu why couples therapy is something I highly recommend. Again, because you did something, but he has his triggers. And while you may be at fault, there are things that you both can work on in a relationship. And so when you guys are trying to reconnect, you might have to say something to him like, well, listen, there's things I have problems with or, and he's going to always want to go back to the cheating or the thing that you did the thing. And that's not productive. And so, you, you know, have you had basically a come to Jesus conversation with him saying, listen, I know I fucked up. I know we have a lot of work to do. I know I have work to do. And I know like, yeah, I quit drinking and working out, but like, I, I want to be with you. I want to make this work. I feel a lot of regret and remorse. I feel scared that I, I ruined this relationship, but like, I, I want to be with you and I want to do whatever I can to make us stronger. And I'm hoping you're willing to do that with me. And are you down? Have you said that to him? Yes. Yeah, I have. And in those words, like not all of them. How did but you say it? Yes, I did. I did tell him like, you know, I screwed up and I realized that and I was a coward. And that's the whole reason I lied in the first place, because I was afraid of a reaction that I created in my head that I projected onto you. And, you know, I did. I was like, if we are breaking up, I completely understand. But if we're not, then we have to like choose each other. And these are the changes I'm committed to making. But I mean, I didn't ask him about anything. I guess I didn't tell him the things that bother me. I mostly focused on that, That's myself. fine. That's my, you know, it's probably a little early for that. It's just more, I don't want you to say things like, well, if we break up, you know, because that's, yeah. that's all he's going to hear. Well, he doesn't want to break up with you. He didn't want you to do this. You got to be very careful about the language you use in these situations. What do you mean if we break up? I don't want to break up, you know? He is afraid yeah. that you are trying to find a way out of this relationship. You got to remember that you are reminding him of someone who already did this shit to him. Yeah. And someone who really Completely. and someone who really hurt him. So what he needs, I'm guessing, is more of you saying how much you want this to work and how much you are willing to make this work. And you are hoping that he is willing to do that with you. And yeah, you can get into like, you know, we have work to do, but yes, now is not the time to bring up, well, just so you know, you do things too. This is more, yeah, you right like now you it. need to like remind him of how badly you want to fight for this relationship and, and you want to work on the things that trigger you and you want to get healthy and like, and, and, and all the things that you are doing right now, the quitting, the drinking, working out, it's, it's for him. You know, and is, yeah. I don't want, you know, like, listen, I want, I want to do what I need to do to make you feel comfortable. I'll make a calendar fine. But I also, I just want us to build up that trust and I want, and I know it's going to take time and I want you to like, and again, a lot of it is like making sure that with checking again, I'm getting the sense that for you and maybe him too, that checking in feels like asking for permission. And to me, a healthy relationship isn't checking in, isn't asking for permission. It's being considerate. Yeah. And That's like, fair. you it, you shouldn't not want to be considerate to your partner. You shouldn't be resistant to be like, oh, well, I have to tell my boyfriend where I'm going. Like, that's not the vibe you should feel when you are checking in with each other. You're checking in because you always want your partner to feel safe and secure about what you're doing. Yeah, I guess that's something that I've practiced. I mean, even today I was like, hey, you know, I have this going on. I'm since this got canceled, I'm going to do that. 
et cetera, just kind of filling it in. And I guess I should just ask him what his expectations are with that. You know, like if all of like the calendar and like location and all that stuff, if that's even helping build the trust, yeah, he even wants that. That's a great point. If you are even, so you're, you never really asked him if this was helpful. Not with the calendar thing. No. I just yeah, I mean, started I don't taking know. actions, trying to, you know, prove I love, yeah. and I love the intention. And listen, your therapist is a therapist and I'm not. I'm just some fucking guy. So nope. take my advice, <laughs> you know, uh, you want. But to me, you not asking if this would be helpful. How do you know if it's helpful? And I'm not saying you are by any stretch of the imagination, but like really great liars and deceitful people like will are very good at making it and, and, and giving you a false sense of security. Mm. So if you are making some calendar that he didn't even ask and he doesn't even know what it's about, like, how does he fucking know it's not even bullshit? Oh, here's a calendar. Yeah. Here's where I'm going to be. Oh, here's my GPS location. Again, good liars can cheat that shit. And if he is, you know what I'm saying? So like, if he's not even asking for it, you it know, may come off as manipulation. Yeah, I don't know. Or just like, it's not, oh. you know, and like, <laughs> I don't want to track, you know, like, I don't want to track you. I don't know. But it's that it's sitting down and saying, hey, listen, what can we do to be more connected? And what can I do to make you feel more? You know, I fucked up and I'm, you know, I don't want you to say that you made him feel like less than because let him say that not don't don't say that to him. But like, it's more like empathy. You know, it's more mm -hmm. if you did to me what I did to you. I would be crushed. And I'm thinking about if the roles were reversed and how hurt and how upset I would be and how much I would be sick to my stomach and how, how hard of a time I'd have to trust you. I want to do whatever I can to earn that back, but I don't want to assume anything I'm going to do. Is, so what can we do? What, what can we sit down? It's just, it's putting in that effort, you know, just show, show the effort of over communication, making a calendar without someone asking it. It's like, it's almost, yeah, it's almost like it, it can come across as almost like, a, fine, you're going to make me do this. I'll share my calendar with you. <laughs> I don't know. You know? Yeah. And I can, I can see that perspective. And I think maybe some clarification would be useful for that because it was as much for me as it is for us, yeah. you know? And maybe I like, I need to just communicate that better. And that's something I know I need to work on because I'm like, what's his love I don't language? Know, I guess What's a, he won't even tell me. I've asked him like six times. He thinks it's dumb. Okay. Well, but you've been dating him for it's, you've been dating him for three years. It's definitely it's not physical touch. Definitely, okay. I would say um, words of affirmation, um, acts of service. Okay. Well, there you go. Words of affirmation, his... acts of service. So there you go. This is why I asked because like, yeah. When was the last time you sent him a message just telling him like how? how thankful you are to have him in his life, how proud you are of him, uh, how cool Yesterday. it is. Yesterday. Great. Do more of that, <laughs> you know? But like, yeah. and and was yesterday the first time in a while or is that a regular thing that you do? It's a regular thing, I'd say. And even if it's not like over text, I mean, I try to communicate in person too. Okay. So you were doing this prior? Yeah, absolutely. How did you receive it? I mean, fairly well. I just don't know if it, it's become something that he's so used to that maybe it's not as significant. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, listen, he like, also, when he says this, like love like languages are stupid, he can't, you know, that's, that's not yeah. a, that's not like, okay, well, love language, call it what you want. But like at the end of the day, how can I, fine, don't call it love languages. How can I make you feel lo more loved? How can I make you feel more valued? How can I make you feel more secure? Regardless of what happened, like you should be, you know, let's say this didn't happen. You should have been able to go to your boyfriend and be like, well, I don't know. How can I make you feel like that I care about you? Yeah. And honestly, like in the first place, I should have been able to be honest in the first place and not lie about it. Yeah. Um, you made a mistake. You don't have to beat yourself up. But also at the same time, are you ha like you have to make sure your your emotional needs are being met. And when uh, when your partner says when you ask your partner what your love what their love language is and they refuse to tell you and say it's stupid, well they're making it harder for you to connect with them. Yeah, That's and fine. maybe actually saying that like you being so res like resistant to this is not helping my security and that's something like before we broke up too that was something i mentioned is i don't feel emotionally safe all the time that's a valid feeling so you guys clearly have work to do in the relationship yeah. and what you did isn't a fireable offense but and despite his 
every reason to be frustrated and hurt and not trust you, but like clearly there's some work that you two need to do together. And at the end of the day, despite you fucking up, he needs to decide whether he wants to be with you or not. And if he wants to be with you, he's going to have to put in just much work in this relationship as he's expecting you to put into it. And yeah, he's not going to forget what you did and it's going to come up and you might say or do something that triggers him and it might, you know, it might feel like he's throwing your face. But to a certain extent, he's going to have to try to not throw it in your face. If he wants to be with you, he's going to have to at least accept that you did it, forgive that you did it, but still, you know, and then do the work. And like, he doesn't. Can I, I wish he was on this call, like, <laughs> well, like got, just to get his perspective and like have you talk through this with him, because some of the stuff I have brought up and it's hard to kind of break through the shell a bit. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, yeah, call back. I'd love to I'd love to talk with both of you. Yeah, and that's another thing. You got you have to see what he's willing to do. I mean, listen, you might have fucked up and he might have every right to be upset, but if his solution to your fucking up is being like, Well, you fucked up, you need to fix this. I'm basically gonna check out. I don't wanna do I don't have to do anything because I didn't cheat on you. You know, so I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do my thing. I'm not going to go to couples therapy. I'm not going to sit down and talk to you about our connection. You have to figure it out and fix our relationship or else like that. Then, then there's nothing to work on, you know? Yeah. So that would be the extreme. I don't know where he's at, but like he, if he wants to be with you, regardless of who fucked up, he needs to do just as much work as you do to make sure you guys get reconnected. And maybe this would be a good time for you guys to figure out what does the future look like for you guys? What are your relationship goals? What are your individual goals? How can you guys help each other meet your individual goals? How can you guys help support each other as individuals? And, and then how can you guys work together on the, your relationship goals and making sure that you, those relationship goals match up? I don't, you don't need to like put on a five-year plan or anything, but like, do you both want to get married someday? Do you both want to have kids someday? What does someday look like for you? Someday is pretty vague, you know? Yeah. Are you on a path to an engagement or are you just dating for the fuck of it? You know? Yeah. And like we are definitely like we've talked about having a family and we both do agree that we are each other's people. Great. Um, It's just, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not the most patient person in the world. <laughs> no one is. I feel my, I feel my hormones uh, doing its thing and raging up the want for a baby. Yeah. So it's been kind of a struggle on that side of things. And he's like, you know, he wants to wait, which I understand logically, but like emotionally and physically, it's a little bit harder for me to kind of wrap my mind around um, just because like I am the one making the money here right now. Like, I mean, he hasn't had to pay for anything in like six months either. So it's, he wants to wait until the business is up and running and doing its thing. And I'm of the perspective, like, I mean, aside from this situation, never, like, there's never a good time. No, it's I, more or less I, just I agree having, with you, but also like, maybe it's a better time when you don't have like roommates too. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. If, if anything, it would wait until like after everybody's out. Listen, you guys are yeah. a long way from figuring out when you guys right for you guys to have kids. I think you just need to figure out step one is reconnecting and make sure that you're both committed to making this relationship work. Can he forgive you? Can you just be like, listen, I again, I think it starts with you doing a better job of empathizing with him, letting him know that if it was the other way around, how hurt you would be and how valid his feelings are and that how how focused you are on rebuilding that connection and trust and just reiterating that and hoping that he is also willing to put in the work, like I said. And if he's not, then you can't, it doesn't matter if you fucked up, you can't fix it on your own. That's not how relationships work. They're a, they're a two-way street. It might feel unfair, but when one person fucks up like you did, unfortunately, it still requires work of the person who was hurt. And if they want to stay yeah. in this relationship and they want to fix it, you know, they're going to have to participate. Do you have any recommendations for um, like reconnection? Is there any, like aside from having these conversations, um, that's step one. all I can really think of is 
you know, like doing date nights or something. Sure. I and mean, I holding don't... hands, I don't know, quality time. I mean, you're, he's going to, first, he's going to have to be willing to have a conversation about love languages, whether you're actually talking about love, way, long, love languages or just being like, hey, you know, you need to be able to communicate on some point that sometimes your emotional needs aren't met, that you don't feel emotionally safe at times, whatever that means. You need to be able to articulate that without making him feel like you're accusing him of something. Hey, sometimes, whether you mean to or not, <laughs> This is how I feel, and I'd like us to work on that. Again, it's using a lot of we and us language. It's not you do this, and I, you never do this. I never get, I never feel this. You know, it's more, you know, sometimes this happens, and we don't do this, and as a result, sometimes, you know, you might have to throw an eye in there, but, you know. I, I feel. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just... I don't know. It's just, what's the common goal? You know, Natalie and I have been through our shit too, but we've always, we've always felt the love of the other person. And we've always felt like the other person was committed to trying to make it work. Even at times of being like, wow, this is, are we sure we can do this? But it was like, no, we, we wanted, it was, there was always a willingness to put in the effort. Always. And that more than anything, you know, add that security. You don't have that right now. You're not sure if he's willing to put in the effort. He's not sure if you're, you know, if you're working out for him. So it's just getting back on the same page there. Yeah. And again, it's like, I just don't know how to approach that. Can we talk about our relationship? I mean, if he's not willing to talk about your relationship, then what's the point of having one? Yeah, I suppose. That's also scary too, though. Well, how so? Yeah. I don't know. The old trope, like, if, Let's say we don't find the common ground, which I don't think that's going to happen. I think we will find the common ground. I believe in us. I do. But um, let's say it doesn't happen. And two years down the line, we're in the same spot or we decide that it's no longer, the relationship is no longer serving us. It's like, then what? It's scary. It's, sure. It's life scary is scary. Thought. You can't predict the future. But who cares about two years from now? Have the conversations now. So like you finding out in two years, you guys aren't willing to put in the work. Well, that's because you didn't have the conversations now. I mean, you can't predict how feelings are going to go, if feelings are going to change. But right now, you're not even sure if you guys are willing to put in the work. And he needs to be willing to have conversations about how you can make him feel more loved or how you, or, or how he can make you feel more loved. Oh, little things he can do, you know, to validate each other. You know, you do need to validate each other from time to time. One of Natalie's love languages is physical touch. At times, I can like, you know, be busy. And every once in a while, she can, she'll have to say like, hey, can you be more physically affectionate? And, I'll, and I can say in that, you know, I can get defensive. I'm like, oh, I don't, you know, but she has the right to ask. And then it's my job to be like, yes, <laughs> I, I can. I can make that effort because it doesn't matter whether I think I'm doing it or not. She's not feeling it. And I want to make her feel a certain way. And he should want to make you feel a certain way and vice versa, you know? Yeah, I do. Uh, it's a tough conversation that needs to be had, I think. It does. But that's the thing. You guys aren't having these tough conversations. There's a little bit of going through the motions in your relationship. Oh, we've been together for three years. Oh, we, you know, we've said we're each other's person. You're not alone in this. This is a lot of relationships. You do all the talking in the first couple months of your relationship, and then you, got, you literally stop checking in with each other. And checking in sounds like, you know, parenting. You guys yeah. need to be more connected. Again, checking in should feel like consideration, not controlling. And right now, it feels like you are making him a calendar so that he knows where you are, not because you want to be more considerate. Yeah, and I could see that perspective, like I said. But it's not like he knows where, like he has my location too. So it's not like- yeah, I have Nally's location, but like it's more out of- Know where I am at any moment, you know? And that yeah. was before all of this happened anyway. Yeah, but he trusted you and he wasn't checking the phone and it's like, you know, location or not, like who knows, you know? Yeah, and regardless, I was at my own house. So it's like, it's yeah. irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. With that, like with the conversation, is that something that like, okay, we have the conversation- like we make these action items, we decide we're on the same page. Like, do you have to, or should we like reiterate that conversation and like revisit it monthly? Or like, I don't understand how that really works, you know? Well, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, yes, you should be checking in as a couple whenever you feel the need, you know? Yes, I suppose. I mean, I was fucking around with Nally the other day 
you know, we were on this high of our daughter and, and I kind of joked was this like, do you like your life? You know, she's like, oh my God, it's amazing. And then I was just like, well, how could your life be better? And it was more about me asking her, like, you know, is there anything I can do? You know, I didn't like spend all day being like, oh, I should check in with Nellie. It was just like, I asked, asked a question. It should, it, that's kind of the thing. It's just like checking in with your partner shouldn't always have to be some big conversation or some big moment. Again, okay. I strongly feel that you guys could benefit from couples therapy because again, couples therapy isn't supposed to be some sort of reconstructive surgery. Granted, you guys have some work you need to do. Couples therapy is about having that mediator. Again, a good couples therapist isn't, is, is not there to take sides. It's when you guys, every couple, right? When you are communicating to your boyfriend, you're not even sure if he's hearing you the way you want to be heard. You're not, you know, you're not sure if he's, you're triggering him accidentally. A couple's therapist will be, you'll be talking and he'll be, and, and, and your therapist, he or she, will be watching your partner to see how he, he is receiving the information uh, you're sending. And at any point when you're, th a good therapist would notice that your, your partner isn't hearing the way you want. And he might time out and be like, wait, so what do you, here's what you heard, she's trying to say and do you hear him? It's that mediation. Because when you're fighting around, you always reach that point where you're saying something, they're not receiving you, they're fighting back, and then it becomes adversarial rather than you trying to connect. And a good couples therapist is that, as two people saying, hey, you know, being vulnerable, like, we're not the best communicators. Our goal is to be on the same page. Our goal is to hear each other out. And sometimes a third party, unbiased a person who's good at communication can help us make sure that we're hearing each other out. Because it's just about getting on the same page. It's not about winning a fight. You know, couples therapy yeah. isn't about like finding a therapist who's going to side with you. If you're trying to win a fight, then you've already lost. Yeah. And that's why I view even like our arguments. I don't, there's a long time there where he's like, well, we, we fight too much. And I'm like, well, us fighting just means that we, we give a shit. Sure. To a certain and, extent, and but like you have to get somewhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that like we've actually improved a lot on is the arguing thing. Like we had an argument this last weekend. And it wasn't about any of this, but like we did, we, we actually came to a conclusion that we both could accept and it was, it was good. And that was actually the first time that's happened in a really long time without it being completely destructive. Yeah. I think you guys need to communicate more. Look into couples therapy. I want just, just yeah. a, a small bit of advice. If assuming you guys work through this, right. I know you don't want to bring it up, but it goes a long way every once in a while just saying, Hey, by the way, I really am sorry about that one time like an, un, a kind of an out of nowhere apology, even when it's long past, just because he probably won't even, he, he might forgive you, but he won't, he, he will, he will forgive you before he forgets about it. And every once in a while, you reminding him that you like are sorry and that you are grateful that you were able to work through it together. And he was, you know, goes a long way. We all like to feel appreciated and men even more than women. And the more you can show him your appreciation in any way will go a long way. And if you just remember, if nothing else, you remember that, I think you'll be in good shape. Yeah, I think that's good advice. Having the thoughtfulness. It's your boyfriend. This is not some yeah. scary professor. It's like you should be able to talk about this shit. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for the advice. Well, um, if, uh, if you guys want to call in together, let me know. I'd love. To, I'd love uh... Okay. Well, I'm kind of afraid of what... <laughs> he would say <laughs> answers you know? are clarity you know listen you got you can't you got to stop being afraid of answers oh i didn't tell you because i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to make you mad there's a little bit of that you you definitely the way you talk it's clear that you are often afraid of confrontation because you're afraid of the answer and when you're afraid of the answer you use it as an excuse to either to avoid confrontation or you know seek out solutions in other areas like that aren't so healthy and you need to be willing to have these conversations, even if you're afraid of the outcome, because the short term might be a little friction, but the long term is the goal is to get on the same page and you can't guess. Yeah. And that's definitely something I need to work on personally. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'll, Absolutely. I'll, you, you literally thought of a solution on your own without even checking in with them. Hey, I'll make a calendar. How, how do you know if that is what he needs? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good point. I have some reflection to do on that level just keep checking in with them yeah and i really like the idea of randomly just you know re-apologizing it. it's not rehashing it it's just reminding him that like i didn't forget and 
Yeah, it's not like every isn't. it's not like every other week, but every once in a while. Again, this is down the road. Yeah. But like Absolutely. hey, yeah. you know, like I am I'm really sorry. And if you are and and if you get to the point where he is willing to work with you on this stuff, if you guys do get into couples therapy, if he does sit down and have these conversations with you, it's that like, hey, this means a lot to me. And this is what I needed yeah. and thank you. And I, I I feel so much closer to you and and Thank you. You know, like when he does do the little things that you want, that he's resistant, just make sure you appreciate it. Yeah. Because he might think it's stupid, but it seems if, if it gets a rise out of you, you know, he should, he should want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. All right. Yeah. And we'll see if he wants to come on. Okay. <laughs> I will. I'll don't be, a, don't be afraid of the answers. You know, uh, I'd be more afraid oh, of guessing. It's easier said than done. Well, not <laughs> really. I don't know. Uh, well, you're okay. always going to find out the answer. <laughs> it's you're always going to find out the answer one way or the other. You're just going to find it out, you know, sooner than later. And you know, it's like you could have asked him how the calendar would work, or you could find out like three months that it didn't do anything for him, or had a, a, had a, the opposite reaction. You know, you will always find out the answer. So the but question the is, will is you like, find out sooner than later, and we'll, like how, at what cost? Yeah, and I'm a little bit combative to that because like the calendar thing isn't only for him you know and like i i wanted to help with the transparency but it was mostly for like myself okay. you know like tracking like not when i'm not drinking um what bills you do what day when's my appointments you know like exercising like so let I him know that like there. does he know yeah. that you know what i'm saying like you're just doing things and hoping it has a certain kind of effect on him yeah he's not yeah, a mind you're reader right. i need to <laughs> I need to discuss it with him and get his perspective on, you know, if the actions I'm even taking, if they're beneficial. Yeah. I can't just decide it's helping. I have to actually, you know. And you got to ask him how, on it. yeah, what could I do? To, like, just be on the same page. Yeah. You, know, you guys get, people get more secure in a relationship when they don't have to guess how their partner thinks or feels. But to get to that point, you have to communicate. Yeah. And validate. You know, otherwise you're going to, you know, try go somewhere else for it. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, my pleasure. I uh, hope to, I uh, hope to get an update from you down the road and uh, I'd love to you know, talk with you both. Yeah, definitely. All right. Talk to you later. Thanks, thanks for your time. All right. Have a good one. How's it going? It's going pretty good. All right. What's your name? My name is Paige. How can we help, Paige? I am 35 years old, and I'm wondering if I should just maybe not so much chill out about my fiance relying on me to raise her kids or putting a lot of that responsibility on me, but uh, me taking on the large percentage of those responsibilities. Gotcha. Okay. A couple questions. When you say chill out, you're implying that you don't like the expectation that she seems to have, which is somehow in some way you should be the one raising her her kids yeah um uh, and it's and more again, and then the my, internal conflict i have with myself and it's not responsibilities that are asked of me but more so if i don't do it it doesn't get done okay so when you say expectations it says you are noticing things that she's not doing that you think she should at least assistant i like i understand when Dating a single parent, single mom, whatever that those you accept those responsibilities of, of a child or whatnot. But what do you are, want some examples? Yeah, I guess. What are some things that she you think she's dropping the ball on? Just, uh, holding them accountable for homework time, uh, brushing their teeth. If I'm not telling them to do that night and day, it's not going to get done. Uh, monitoring screen time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Kind of enforcing I'll, I'll, time outside. And so is this a like difference in, in, in parenting styles or is she just like doesn't care or too lazy to do it? <laughs> After our most recent conversation, because um, we, we had these conversations before getting, uh, moving in together, making that choice to do that. Mm -hmm. And we seem to have the similar values. But then when it comes to kind of putting those in action, maybe that's where laziness comes in. Um, and then after our most recent conversation, when I was talking about the screen time, that she's okay with them pulling a 12-hour shift watching YouTube on their tablets, whatever, for, for on crazy. the weekend. Um, she just brought up that she wasn't raised like that to to have that time monitored and whatnot. And 
doesn't necessarily see a problem. Well, I can I can spend hours telling you why she might be wrong, but like, did she know? Like, do you know what your kids are watching? You know, kind of thing. Like, a screen is a babysitter these days, and right. and they could be watching. Kids are smart and savvy and creative, and I get parental controls are a thing, but boy, it's uh, you are you are letting the internet raise your kids. Anyways, let's focus on the task at hand. Uh, your fiance, who's the other parent in that equation? Uh, she was married, a um, high school sweetheart. They were together probably about 10 years. He is not in the picture. Um, I think they had a messy end. Um, he lives out of state and has never, as long as I've known the kids, has never reached out to contact them or support them. How many kids are we way. talking about here? Three. Okay. And so when you say like, should you just get over it? Like, is it more about, are you frustrated yeah, I guess it's back to my original question. How much of this is just a difference in how you guys should raise the kids? Or is it more about who is responsible for doing what? Maybe it's a combination. Uh, maybe my question is maybe more, should I accept that there's a difference and just support the way that she is okay raising the children? Or should I... Well, I guess, I guess it depends. You know, what accept are... the responsibility of... Leading how I think they should be. You are engaged to a single mom. Correct. Okay. So I'm guessing when you got engaged, or I'm hoping, you guys had at least some expectation. And, and your partner, the single mom, is in fact very much a single mom. The other parent isn't in the picture, not there, non-existent as far as you know, not coming back. Who knows? I mean, down the road, that might happen. But as, right now, not in the picture. So what conversations did the two of you have early in your relationship, even prior to engagement, or certainly when you got engaged, of like what role you would play in their life? Because at the end of the day, it's her choice to decide whether like, hey, listen, you know, she might be someone who's like, listen, I got this. These are my kids. I love you for you. I want to have a relationship with you. But when it comes to my kids, like I, you know, you're not their parent and respectfully, I'm going to raise my kids the way I want to raise my kids. And then you can decide for yourself whether you are on board for that or not. But that's, it's her kids. It's her right to say that. Or she could say, hey, listen, like I have my kids, but like I want a life with you and I want a family with you. And if you are open to be, you know, a co-parent with me, I'd love us for me and my kids, for you to be a part of our family. And maybe we might grow our family and we might not, but either way, like I want you to be a part of that. And, and then let's together as a, as a team, as two parents, figure out how to raise my kids slash our kids. Like what, what, which conversation did you guys have? It was the co-parenting kind of conversation because I did bring that up because I wanted to understand my role and how that would fit. And um, even when we had first all moved in together under the same roof, there was a time where I felt like I was, I guess, harping on them a lot. Mm -hmm. And I had told her if she felt I was overstepping in any way to let me know. And it was more of just that, Hey guys, do this, don't do that. Um, teaching them boundaries and, and just whatnot. So when she was like, no, you're fine, you're fine. And so, yeah, it was that co-parenting approach that okay. we, we had planned to take. Great. So the fact that you're feeling frustrations right now about like how things are going, well, at least you know, at least the original expectation is that she wants you to be a co-parent here. And when you were like, well, should I just like chill out about like and it's like, you know, Nellie and I kind of joke about who's going to be the good cop, who's going to be the bad cop, you know, and I think ultimately we'll probably hopefully share that responsibility. But like, you know, that's ultimately what this sounds like this is about, that like mom either doesn't have the time or the bandwidth or the interest of being the bad cop or, you know, and, and you seem to be willing or wanting to do it, but you're kind of feeling like, why do I always have to be the only one? Which is tough on you since you're not, you know, their biological parent. Uh, you might be feeling like, well, that kind of sucks that I'm the bad cop. That, fuck, I'm already, I'm just trying to get these people to like me. You know, and you're making me be yeah, back and they up. do like yeah. They but I love them. They love me, and and I know that they needed that guidance because of you know their parents' relationship prior. Maybe they didn't get what I deem you know the the proper guidance through going through toddlerhood and then into you know adolescence and whatnot. But um, I, I definitely try and approach it in a way that's not bad cop. But sometimes I just it's feels like I'm going against the current with with her and what I'm trying to teach them and, and develop them into. Well, since she since you guys have had a conversation that she desires for you to be a co-parent, then I think you guys need to continue to sit down and be like, all right, like share your frustrations, you know, like acknowledge where you don't see eye to eye. 
you know, it's like, are you okay with the kids having this much screen time? Here are my concerns as to why it might be a problem. And she was like, oh, well, it's, it makes my life so much easier because obviously they fuck, they can watch YouTube for 12 fucking hours and I can get shit done. And I'm already busy enough. And oh my God. You know, but either way, as parents who will want to raise these kids together, you guys got to get on the same page. And that's going to require multiple conversations over and over and over. And those feelings may, may change. As far as like screen time, I, I would recommend her reading a book by Jonathan Haidt. He's a social scientist, uh, The Anxious Generation. We'll write that down. Uh, it tells you all about why uh, phones uh, are damaging children and the risks of about you know the screen time and who has access to them. Pedophiles aren't in the streets anymore; they're online. You know, and that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. And you know, forgetting about pedophiles, there's drug dealers. There's just also like who's raising just your kids? Content. They content. Don't need to be content. Seen. You know, like values. Anyways have her read the book but regardless of what you guys decide just get on the same page and it's like hey babe whatever you guys decide it's like all right if we decide to limit this or limit that or we decide to you know maybe you might decide like sleepovers what are your policies for sleepovers you know i mean sleepovers can be a very positive thing to have your kids like feel a sense of independence but like where are they sleeping over do you trust the parents like and then how do you guys enforce that with the kids? Who is communicating that? Are you guys doing it as a team or are you always having to be the bad cop? You know? And so you two just need to talk about like who's doing what when, but you need to make sure you're on the same page in terms of as a team, how do we want to raise the, uh, the kids? You know? And if you yeah. guys aren't seeing eye to eye, whether it's screen time or something else, then you guys have to figure out, Hey, we need to get on the same page because you're right. You can't be trying to invoke some sort of boundaries and rules with the kid, with these kids when mom isn't aligned with you. And, and I guess that's, we have had multiple conversations and I know throughout our, our time together, we'll need to continue to have them. But with the last one that we had, which was just a couple of days ago, I was at the point where I was like, okay, like your, like it's your rules. I'll align with what you want and I'll just support it. And I won't, which doesn't feel right um, to say that because I still firmly disagree in some areas and, and want her to step up in, in other areas as well. You just got to keep, communicating that i mean what what when you are ha when you're communicating these concerns how what is she saying how is she receiving it initially i want to say we've had two prior conversations and she was like you're right i'll step in more um she set an alarm to remind you know the oldest to do their 30 minutes of reading every night because same thing i was like if i haven't been telling them to read every single night they wouldn't have finished a single book this year and she kind of laughed about it and I was like, and I just told her like, it's not funny. Oh, uh, we need to help these yeah. kids develop in all areas of life. And, and I think it maybe comes down to that laziness side. Um, she was a, a teen mom. And so she did spend a portion of her motherhood living with her, her parents. And I think got a lot of support from that and has kind of just gotten used to that, which she did admit to in one of our first conversations that she was used to her mom, like, oh, I know my mom will take care of that. I know my mom will get that with the kids. And and I told her uh, that I'm not her mom. And, and if that's what she's looking for, um, yeah. I'm not. You're looking for a partner. A yeah, exactly. So I think you're just going to have to, some, you know, you're going to have to keep enforcing that boundary and keep letting her know when you're frustrated. And keep saying, asking for help. Hey, listen, like I want to be the best co-parent I can be, but you are their mom. It has to start with you and you need to want this. You know, I can't be the one who's doing all this. And like, don't you want the best for your kids? I mean, shit, you know, like, but. Yeah. So I, I guess that was my question more like just continue to have these conversations and push for them or just kind of take the the passenger seat. And yeah, I definitely don't think. Her... You, yeah. No. I mean, you guys agreed to co-parent. And you are a willing participant with kids who, quite frankly, just aren't your own. Mm -hmm. So she needs to participate in this partnership that you graciously agree to be a part of, you know? And like you said, you're not, I'm certainly, I, I'm, you don't want to feel used or you don't want to feel like you're only in this relationship because she's willing to like do what mom used to do. And, she, you know, what is she doing with her free time? I mean, the kids are, and I don't want to say she doesn't care about them. We have them involved in, in sports. So 
throughout the week we're doing that. Um, we're at work. She'll be over at her parents or just on the phone or watching a show or, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, the kids are they're going to watch TV and be on their phones, I guess, to a certain extent. But it just comes down mm-hmm. to you, I guess, constantly saying, listen, I need your help. I know this is hard. I know we have to make sacrifices, but we're doing it for them. And this is what's best for them. It comes down to, again, agreeing, regardless of what work it takes and, and, and how difficult the execution of it is, but agreeing about what's best for the kids. And then after you agree about what's best for the kids, well, how is the two of you together are going to execute that plan? Acknowledging that it won't always be easy, that you're going to have to, like, you're going to get pushback from kids. They're not going to want to read. They're not going to want to do their homework. They're not going to want to do this. Like, that's what fucking kids do. And you guys are going to have to be a united front. You're going to have to be a team. And you're going to have to push back on the kids. But it's for the sake of the kids, you know? And you're certainly willing to do it. But you need her help. And her being the biological mother, she needs to lead the charge. It needs to be obvious to the kids that it matters as much to her as it, mu- as it does to you. Definitely. Well, thank you for your advice. I will continue to, to have those conversations with her. And um, we were pretty good at being able to communicate through our any discrepancies between us or whatnot. Yeah. So we'll just, even don't though they feel draining. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't give up. To, yeah, I know it can be her. training. <laughs> But yeah, I think the big thing is don't give up, you know, keep being affectionate and leading with love and all that stuff. But this is important, you know, um, and um, yeah, it's important. All right. And have her read that, good. and have her read that book <clears throat> or, I will. I or, it or listen to it, read it, and listen I'll to it together. It. She's not much of a reader. Or a... I am. Either am I. Books on tape. You can listen to them all talk right. about it. It'll probably, you know, it's very scientific and technical, but I think it'll be very eye-opening about like the risks that you're putting your kids by having, by, by having their screens be their babysitters. Definitely. Dangerous stuff out there. I agree. All right. Take care. Thanks for the call. All and right. please let us know. We, we'd love to, we'd love an update because obviously like this is, these are difficult conversations to have uh, for parents. And, and if uh, we'd love an update to, I'm sure our audience would be very interested. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. We enjoyed it. Give it to you. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at com for all things asknick. Texting office hours. We'll be back tomorrow for reality recap. Monica will be here for going deeper along with Tyler Cameron. Monica Garcia from formerly of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. It is intense, the episode. You'll laugh. You'll cry. You might change your mind. You might not. I don't know. Also, Tyler Cameron joins us to talk about his OnlyFans. Can't wait. See you then. Awesome. Great. Choices matter. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.